Okay, so uh, we're asking uh, dumb uh, SEO questions uh, each, each week. Uh, we uh, answer or at least attempt to answer the questions asked on the SEO questions community on Google+. Plus. Um, with us tonight, uh, we have Arthur Radelescu. Uh, Arthur is a search engine optimization specialist from Bratislav uh, in Romania. Masataki Wasa um, is a Google Plus, uh, sorry, a, a Google top contributor in the uh, Google Plus Help community and the AdSense uh, forum. Uh, Micah Fisher Kirshner is. Um, um, not a Google Plus contributor, but he's somehow connected to Google. I've got an idea. Um, <laughs> no, I did you? Um, Micah Blogs is the data marketeer. Rob Mars uh, is a Google co top contributor. Uh, he's an AdWords aficionado in the Netherlands as a website, marketbiz.nl. By the way, what, what's the uh, URL for your blog, Micah? Um, <clears throat> that's the mikefk.com slash data dash marketeer with two okay. E's for that. We'll have to put a, have you got that on your profile on the wcoquestions.com site? I'll have to check. Okay. Um, Tim Kappa is a search engine optimization uh, um, specialist. He's also a conversion rate optimization specialist. Um, he hails from uh, London in the UK. All right. Um, tonight uh, we have quite a few questions. The first one is from. Uh, I just realised I didn't start the hangout on time too. I am such an idiot. Okay. Um, Right, our, our, our first question uh, is from um, Jim Newbury, uh, who changed uh, his location info on his site and social media sites uh, three weeks ago. Uh, he goes on to say, I'm a photographer who was happy to have first page Google results for the, the search query Ch Chicago photographer. I've since moved to LA and although two or three weeks ago I changed my location info, I noticed that I'm still on the first page despite the title and description saying Los Angeles for that search, but not getting results for the search term Los Angeles photographer. I know it takes time for Google to process this and there might be more competition in LA uh, and I was long associated with Chicago. I understand that this is not going to be easy, uh, but I am curious if anyone has advice about anything I can do to expedite things and or uh, improve my LA ranking. By the way, I don't have a retail on-site location. Um, the website we're talking about is jimnewbery.com, N-E-W-B-E-R-R-Y.com. Right. Okay. Uh, just firstly, just to let Jim know that obviously, um, you know, sort of a Los Angeles photographer is going to be a lot harder to rank for than for Chicago photographer. That I mean, that that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, you know, the site. Um, I would probably, you've only got Los Angeles Photographer uh, in, you know, you don't really have it on your site. Ideally, if we want to try and boost that a little bit in terms of, um, you know, uh, I would recommend you adding your um, address to the bottom of your site, and uh, which would contain Los Angeles in, in it, obviously, and that address um, would then be linked to your uh, Google Plus local page. Now, on your Google Plus local page, you don't actually have your website listed. So you haven't created a any connection back from there 
you know, saying that, you know, you're in Los Angeles and pointing back to your site. You, you've got a kind of a broken connection there. Um, um, so, for sh you know, th that's definitely something to um, uh, sort out. On your personal page, you've also got Jim Newbury lives in Los Angeles. Great. Um, but you don't link to your website again, so you know that's you know that that that's that's definitely another thing. And of course, in your other profile, you could also add there that um, uh, you know this is my my place page. Or in fact, I think you do. No, you don't. Uh, you link your link to yourself. But yeah, add your own website in, and also add in your your Google Plus local page. But um, and then the thing is is to try and get some local citations flowing. If um, looking at Chicago, you had a lot of local citations flowing to you. There was interviews in um, newspapers, Chicagoist, and all of them were titled Jim Newbury, Chicago Photographer, hence why you were doing very well for Chicago Photographer, because there was a lot of um, uh, articles and websites referencing Jim Newbury, Chicago Photographer, to your actual website. And that's why you're still probably going to be ranking for Chicago Web Photographer for a long time to come. Uh, what you want to do is try and replicate that and get yourself into some magazines, get yourself uh, into some local uh, photography directories, um, and just get those local citations flowing again. Um, and you know, you've taken the right step, you've changed a lot of your little different things. Um, in terms of all your social media, etc. Obviously, um, I would I would just double check some of those, check some links to your site, and where possible, um, you know. Actually, I've just had a good thing. You know, even though Chicagoists and things like that, you could contact them and do follows up, do a follow up article. Jim Newbury's taken the decision to move to LA. Um, you know, they may or may not republish another article about you. But there is always that possibility. But definitely get all your, you know, your, um, your, your, your local page connected to your site and have that verified um, for sure. Um, connect that to your address in the footer of your site. Uh, that's an easy way. Um, yeah, that's that's ideas from me. Anybody else? Authorship, um, w w what do we think, um, that, that's a, a lay down was there for Jim, isn't it? Because it, it's, I mean, his site is just drop dead gorgeous, uh, it oozes quality. Um, it's more than likely going to rank um, with his photo uh, and um, his follower numbers. Although I must say that Jim has um, probably very low numbers for a photographer, which sort of would say that he's not very active on Google+. Plus. And yeah, maybe. I think yeah. These these are very, very new. Um, you know, he's because he he's kind of got two. He's got the he's got his local business page, which he could, you know, it, he could in a sense just be using the the Jim Newbury photography. Uh, what he can do is obviously he can connect his site with Rail Publisher to his uh, his local his Google Plus local page, Jim Newbury Photography. Uh, so when he links, he, he can connect it that way. Uh, but then he needs to remember to, you know, use the two accounts as such. Um, because if he uses his personal all the time, you know, it's just a question of finding that perfect balance. Um, and his authorship, but he could attach his authorship actually to, because he's got You know, uh, he's actually got two blogs. If you click on his blog, it goes to Picture, picture Du Jour. Um, and yeah, that would be good. He could even use some, um, I mean, if we want to take a step further, it's 
but uh, he could mark up his images with schema markup for sure. I think that, that, that that's one of his subsites, the picture of the day, and I was wondering whether it would be clever to also publish a picture every day on Google Plus. Yes, he should. The picture that he, the picture that he publishes on his daily thing, um, he should publish obviously on his personal page, as well as why not on his his local page. And uh, if he links to that uh, photo um, that he publishes on Google Plus uh, on his website, uh, that will also increase his um, uh, Google Plus view count. Yeah, definitely. I really love that picture of the um, of the chap uh, having a fish thing, whatever you call it, where your fish get your feet get fish manicured or whatever, pedicured. <laughs> That's on JimNewbury.com, is it? Uh, well, it's on both yeah. actually. It's on the picture of the day, and yeah. That's a really cool image, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see it, yep. What do you think about the lack of text on these pages? You know, he gives a bit of info um, on, some, on some images and something on the other. You know, what I've seen from, from image and photography sites, they can, you know, they can do really well. Uh, purely based on the image and um, getting it out there. Uh, but definitely on his Jim Newbury, I would suggest getting his address in there. Maybe even just giving a slight introduction, bit of text under those two main images that he has on his front page. But you know, he's got the um, he's got the about us and yeah. I mean, he's, he's got an, an, an enormous advantage um, that he's, he isn't taking advantage of, and that is that he's a photographer. Um, mm. On Google Plus, I mean, when I die and come back again, I'm coming back as a photographer um, with blonde hair and big breasts. <laughs> I'll give you guys 20 years start and I'll catch you in three months. <laughs> Michael, what are your comments? <clears throat> well, not too much based off of Tim kind of covered the main areas. Um, just when I started looking at kind of the competitive landscape, um, you know, he's moving from a... Uh, uh, Chicago to LA and LA being the hub of Hollywood is more than likely going to be uh, quite a bit more competitive and uh, I really like Tim's suggestion about recontacting a lot of the uh, news article sites um, about him moving to LA um, yeah but he, he also has to realize it's going to take a little bit of time uh, on its own just from a standpoint that um, you know, Google doesn't, you know, wants to make sure um, it's providing the most relevant results. And uh, um, since he's been, all, all basically, whatever, if he thinks about it from a standpoint of um, what people have been saying about him, everybody is still saying that he is a photographer based in Chicago. Um, so the way that Google would see it is that he's still a Chicago photographer. Um, and, and that's where kind of Jim, Tim's point, um, an idea works a lot, works rather well because if you want to start now getting people that say that you are a photographer from LA. Um, and that would be a helpful way to make sure uh, Google begins to recognize, oh, okay, now you truly are uh, in LA as a photographer versus, say, just visiting. Um, and you want to, you know, be able to expand that out. And so it's kind of uh, one of the things uh, to be considering 
um, and, and why it's taking Google as well a bit of time to uh, start showing you uh, in, in the new area. Excellent, Matt. Um, Arthur, um, did you have any comment to make on this one? Not quite. I mean, um, mm, uh, the other panelists just covered it very well. He has to take a lot of things in consideration. I mean, he has to do a more serious job. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, Masataki, um, I see that you answered uh, or helped uh, Jim Newbery uh, on the Google Plus uh, help community. Uh, do you have anything to add to this? No, I think Tim really covered the grants very well. Um, so I don't have really much to add, but I think adding publisher markup would help. Um, authorship is, is established, but um, if he does add publisher, then I think it it would it would quite new. it would help a lot. I think. Okay, um, t t Tim, you recently. Uh, Hosted a, a big extravaganza in um, London, uh, didn't you? For, for one of the brands that you support, are you allowed to talk about that? Yeah, I never, I never physically hosted it. It was a collaboration between online and offline, really, and a and a PR company. So, I mean, what I'm getting at is, do you think it would be a good idea for uh, Jim? I mean, if if it was a profitable. Um, if there was a profit motive in being for, first for um, Los Angeles photographer, um, would it be good for him to uh, dig deep and um, host something similar um, in Los Angeles? To get, to get this press along. Well, I don't, I don't kind of really know what uh, Jim does in that sense. I mean, yes, he's a photographer, but. Uh, you know, uh, you know, judging from the images that he does, um, you know, c c could he have um, host something in a in, in in a local art gallery with his images, get some of the local press around, basically to say, hey, I've arrived. Um, the, what he needs is is local citation. Of course, everything translates. So when he's got the local. You know, if he's at a local wedding fair, or at, if he's at a, you know, uh, an art gallery, or he's doing some images, or he's doing something or other, um, it it translates one <coughs> online because he's been written about, and it, it it's generally got that citation about you know he's either working in LA, or it'll give his address, or it'll give something to that effect. So. The context of LA is passed across online, whereas also offline, and and I'm sure judging from you know being a successful photographer in Chicago, he also understands the ways of getting offline uh, press coverage, uh, which of course generates I its own its own business, but the two work hand in hand. Um, yeah, I think Jim needs. No, no, no. Go on. No, just one thing that came to my mind was that um, sometimes people organize photo walks on Google+, and that's a really good way to integrate sort of getting to know people in real life, locally, in the area, you know, with online Google+, Plus presence. So if there's one being organized in LA, that might be a you know, good idea to participate or perhaps even organize one. I have something more to add. Nobody talked about removing his citations from his old place. So uh, maybe he should take into consideration to remove his old citations or maybe to change them if the citation place, it's a, uh, I don't know, it's a US wide one or it's a local one. If it is a local one, he can remove his citations from his old place and start doing exactly like Tim said, the new citations, maybe local yellow pages or and so on and so forth. Yeah. Mm. 
Okay. You know, talking, um, you, you, you know, you know, we had before we came on air, we were just talking about images, and what what uh, Masataki just mentioned actually, um, you know, uh, kind of gave me the thing just to get to get going in terms of on Google Plus itself, not necessarily for your site, but to gain that kind of following is um, yeah local images local landmarks get images there start posting them on trying to get in touch with people that enjoy photography and things in LA and um, of course we won't mention it's going to increase your view count but um, <laughs> yeah, you know, start start getting your um, yeah start getting some 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 local shots which might not necessarily be kind of I don't know what photographers would call them portfolio work but think about it as building your presence on Google Plus in LA itself because people in LA would generally recognize the images that you've taken and potentially share it or plus one it. Um, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I mean, I don't even know what, um, what's, what the landmark is in LA. Uh, I don't know. Um, what's in LA? Is Hollywood in LA? Yeah. Mike, it would What's in LA? Give me a landmark. Anyway, so yeah, I mean, you know what I mean. It's like I don't know, Hollywood. A cute, a cute, a, a cute fat puppy licking some kid's ice cream underneath the oh, Hollywood I'm, sign. I'm glad you said ice cream, Tim, because I tell you, <laughs> a cute fat puppy licking some kid's ice cream underneath the Hollywood sign. People in LA would go, "Oh, isn't that cute?" It's under it's underneath a recognizable thing, um, and that would just build up a local uh, LA kind of following and sharing because they can kind of oh look that's that that's that, um, so it would build up your LA uh, you know um, connections uh, on Google Plus for sure, yeah. So there, there's you know there's there's quite a lot for him to work on and okay, I'm so glad you said ice cream. I nearly had a heart attack. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Look, yeah, we, we, I noticed you all mentioned view count uh, a number of times, and we are going to cover it uh, later on um, in our um, weekly news roundup uh, at the end of um, uh, this um, hangout. But while we, uh, some of you won't be there for that, um, um, so can I take a quick poll? Uh, can you give me a 15-word uh, summation of what you think about the new uh, feature on Google Plus, the, the view count? I can see that you're all very much excited about it. Um, <laughs> I see it. Well, I think it's... I, that's a really significant poll, actually. I, that, 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 that's, that's a picture of a thousand words. <laughs> Yeah. It's pointless. It's it's pointless, and in fact, I'm yeah. going to be experimenting on how to game it with Masataki. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, I uh, already. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what they hope to get out of that, but um, that that's definitely going to be pointless. And I'm actually just glad that I haven't seen too many people. Most people seem to be panning it than uh, highlighting it as a, you know, really good thing. So I'm probably but, just, yeah, I'm 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 on the, I'm on the ever the ever optimist. I'm saying, they've released this now as the starting point to creating some really useful metrics available to you in some kind of dashboard or connected into your webmaster <clears> tools. <throat> That is the ever optimistic me saying that. On the other hand, what they have released at the minute is just pointless. Yeah. I have to say that I think I'm the only bloke on Jonathan Zunger's thread um, announcing the, um, the new feature. And I asked the question, um, um, could, it, could, the new, could it be considered a feature to encourage uh, Participation. I said this. It's hard to, to see value in a metric that, um, um, since uh, Jonathan Zunger gets 
in my mind, uh, 10 out of 10 or you know, 110 percent for uh, content quality and, and volume uh, and uh, sincere engagement. Um, uh, and his view count is only 20 million compared with uh, some of the crappiest lawyer spammers uh, that we've got on um, um, Google Plus. Jesse, I'm talking to you. Um, but um, yeah, he, he has 29 million and Jonathan has 20, say no more. No comment? No? Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's call this one uh, done and dusted and uh, on, on to the next uh, is a question from Pale Jane. Uh, Pale said, Oh, this is a lovely question um, because we can uh, guide um, Pale on, back onto the path of uh, true enlightenment. Um, he said, I have done the following activities to, to improve uh, rank without success. He goes on to say, hello all, how should I improve keyword ranking? I have done all of these off-page activities but I didn't get any improvement in rank. He has done one, directory submission, two, social bookmarking, three, press releases, four, article submissions, five, classified ads, uh, six, blog creation, seven, blog commenting, uh, eight, backlink submission, and SMO. I don't know that an, an uh, acronym. What's SMO, guys? Probably social media optimization, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> social yeah. media optimization. All right. Um, and social media optimization. I'm surprised he didn't mention guest blogging. Um, anyway, um, can somebody give um, Pale Jane uh, the bad news? He's done everything that actually pretty much won't really help. <laughs> Yeah, I totally agree. Mike is frozen. Does someone want to pick up on that? Actually, I like the look of Micah in that uh, in that freeze frame. Should I do? Yeah. Um, You're as Mike has said, you go ahead. No, go ahead. I I got go for it. Go ahead, Tim. Yeah, as as Mike has said. Um, <laughs> Everything he's done is pretty much, um, you know, what shouldn't be done. Um, I, I would just suggest uh, checking out the Google Google uh, Webmaster Guidelines just to get a better idea on why we're saying that, um, uh, you know, and Google's got to say about it. But, um, yeah, you know, yeah, those those are pretty outdated. Uh, I can totally understand why you've listed those because they've been online and printed for the last 10, 15 years. Um, so it's been pretty much ingrained in a whole generation. Um, so it's, 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 you know, like, you know, it's not really your fault for finding the bad info. Um, I would just concentrate on, uh, you know, uh, creating great content on your site. And if you have optimized your social media, um, you know, platforms, then use those platforms to push out the content that you publish on your own site. Um, and of course, try and reach out to, you know, really, you know, industry niche specific uh, influencers out there um, and try and get your content noticed by them. Uh, but yes, please just stay away from, from that list you've created. I might add that um, we have a lot of fun uh, on um, these Hangouts um, because down the right hand side of our screen uh, is a list of comments that um, get added as, as we go and, and uh, I see a couple of comments there. The site is doomed. One of them uh, has um, eight O's and another one has uh, I think seven O's. Um, I'm not sure if your ranking, uh, Pale Jane, is 
seven or eight, but really a, you should reverse um, all, all that you've done um, because it's only going to end in tears. Is that fair comment? Okay. Let's uh, call uh, that one answered and our next on our run list <coughs> is from um, Prashant Sutha. He says, I want to delete all history and search results uh, from Google. Um, he says, hello to everyone. I am new in SEO and I need some help. I have one blog which is uh, www.ddr-movie.com um, and I need to close it uh, soon. Uh, I want to delete all history and search results from Google. Um, I need to remove the links from Google and other search engines. Uh, how can I do it? Um, can you advise me? Um, I, I can't see the comments. Oh, wait a minute. Daniel gave me a new button. Hang on. Um, I can't read it. There was a lot there. Um, guys, can you answer uh, Prashant? Yeah. So David had the one of his comments was uh, in Google Webmaster Tools section within Google Index called Remove URLs. And then that can help to remove all pages. Um, and then you should add a robots.txt file that blocks from being crawled. Um, I would, before doing that, I would put no index, no follow on those pages, um, and then add the robots.txt file. But um, um, maybe even on no cache, just for safety measure. But uh, um, yeah, the. Um, he wants to delete that. Yeah, he, yeah, that probably would cover most of it um, for what he needs. But it, it also depends on how nitpicky he wants. Because you know, if, if it's gonna get stuck on something like the Internet Archive, then he's got a whole other fun dealings to to handle. But uh, if he just wants it off of Google and the search engines, that will probably mostly. Um, handle what he needs. I would even, uh, if he wants to take off the website for good, I wouldn't bother to make with no index, no follow. I would just delete the website and maybe give a 410 to the homepage and that's it. I mean, all the website will be gone anyway, so. Well, I can add something to that, Arthur, because I had experience of this. Um, we, uh, for many years, uh, about 15 years, had a logging server. Um, so we used to redirect um, um, the, the, the links on shopsafe.com to our logging server and then send them on to um, um, the, 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 the destination. Now, um, it, it became apparent that Google didn't like uh, that practice, um, as they probably didn't like any of the practices on our site. Um, but the, the, the um, advice given to me was uh, to simply drop those um, um, subdomains um, uh, out of DNS, like for argument's sake, uh, for uh, www.shopsafe.com.au. We used to redirect to our logging server via w3c.shopsafe.com.au. Anyway, what I've noticed now, if you do a site search for shopsafe.com.au, you'll see a great heap of, um, or not a great heap of, but there'll be some uh, pages there that keep popping up and then dropping out uh, there of w3c's. So that even though I've um, totally taken the, the subdomain out of um, DNS, um, Google still clings on to those old URLs and there are literally millions of them. Um, so what I intend to do as soon as I get some time is, is, is create a, um, a subdomain, um, redirect all the traffic to, to a single page which is a 410. So hopefully eventually Google will drop them out. Um, yeah, that's just something that happened to me anyway. Yeah, well, that's why I, uh, I said uh, to put on a homepage a 410. Mm -hmm. I 
yeah, probably you're right. Maybe he should be redirecting all the pages from the website. But even though if he deletes them all and uh, use the um, uh, webmaster tools to submit a dropout of all the URLs, maybe that will help. I don't know. Because even that should um, expire after 90 days. So if there are still links, uh, linking backlinks to the website, probably in the future Google will still come and try to get the, the that specific content. And if it will get the 410 for a while, maybe he should leave it like this for six months or maybe longer. Well, can I just say that those links that you see actually indexed in, in Google's uh, site index for w3c.shopsafe.com.au and other sites, um, but all, all starting with the sub subdomain uh, um, preposition of w, uh, w3c, um, they have been out of DNS, I would say, for at least nine months, and yet Googlebot still thinks that they should be uh, uh, still in existence. Um, so I, I think something need, more positive needs to happen. Um, because I'm getting more traffic to, to pages that don't exist than uh, to pages that do exist. <laughs> Maybe you can take advantage of that. Probably you should do redirect them, but not on the 410. <laughs> Maybe to some, um, um, I don't know, alike, tra alike content. If you can, that I think well, look, somehow. Over the years, since about 2010, I have bent over backwards. I've, I've jumped through hoops, done everything to try to please uh, Googlebot with redirects and um, so on. Um, but I, I finally decided that I'm not going to bother trying to, to please Googlebot. I'm just going to please myself from now on. Um, it's not going to, I mean, it couldn't be any worse. So we're, we're bumping along the bottom. Um, of um, you know the, 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 the traffic count uh, anyway, and um, you know so now I'm, I'm just going to you know, do things like um, the straight 410, and uh, um, I, I just can't get it any worse. Anyway, that's my little whinge. Um, all right, um, back on track. I noticed. Um, oh no, look, I won't talk about that on air. Um, okay, so let's uh, call that one answered unless somebody else wants to say more. All right, um, Michael Sampson uh, says, I have added um, Rel, Rel Publisher to my website and, and I'm not sure exactly uh, um, which link to use. He goes on to say, I have a Google listing in places and a Google Plus business page. My question is, they both offer you a badge for your site, and I'm not sure which one to use. Uh, also, I have added the, the uh, Rel Publisher to the website, and I'm not sure exactly which link um, to put in it. Should I link it to my local places listing or the Google Plus listing? I appreciate your help. Thanks. There's a oh. lay down there for, I'll go on, Michael. Oh, this one Tim already answered, so I was going to throw that over to him. <laughs> um, lay down, okay, go on, sorry. Uh, well, yeah, so Tim's is just, yeah, the business page is real publisher. Um, the local page is the link, you, link your address on, this, on the site to this URL, and the authorship is the real author. On blog articles from the personal profile URL. Ah, uh, yes, I remember Tim's answer now on, on the uh, WCA questions community on Google Plus. Uh, it was absolutely brilliant. I gave it a plus ten. Yep. Yeah. yeah. yeah Tim's answer was business page is Rel Publisher. I'm sure Michael just said it. I'll just say it again. Local page link your address on the on site to this URL and authorship rel author on blog articles from personal profile URL. Simplest explanation I've seen of a very complicated subject. Yep. 
Okay. I hope um, that um, Michael Sampson is, is pleased uh, with that response. Um, next, we have a question from Neoteric UK Limited. Uh, is there any way to recover your deleted business Google Plus page? He says, uh, hi guys, we have a query. Um, isn't it funny? No, nobody says you guys are fantastic anymore. I wonder what happened. Um, anyway, he says, we have a query. Um, he says, is there any way to recover your deleted plus, your deleted Google Plus page? Uh, as this page has a, a good reputation on Google Plus, uh, any help on this uh, would be appreciated. So it seems Masataki already answered this one. So maybe if he's available to tackle on this one. It depends. Um, if the Google Plus page was a brand page, non-local Google Plus page, then and it, if it was deleted by user action, then there is no way to recover it. I think the situation is somewhat different for local, and Tim knows that better than I do. Yeah, uh, I mean, for local, <clears throat> there's uh, two ways to go about it if you accidentally deleted it. Um, you, can, you can go into MapMaker. You can then um, um, tell MapMaker that actually this decision uh, was incorrect and wait for someone to... Um, uh, but someone needs to either verify that or the Google bot needs to verify that. Um, however, if you um, wanted just a faster resolution to it, it's just recreate the, the page itself uh, and just have it re-verified because ultimately that is normally faster getting it back up, re-verified, than, having the, um, the, than waiting for the map maker. Um, what I would do, though, is because what's going to happen is the map maker, uh, the old one sits in map maker for quite some time. But um, what I would then do is when you've got your new one verified and the other one, I would then tell map maker that this one is a duplicate of the original one. You can also do that um, if it still appears in in the Google listings, uh, which it should do for a little time, but it will say this is currently closed. You can always suggest feedback onto that and also say one was accidentally deleted, here's the new one. Um, eventually the signals will, will get you know, passed across to the new one, uh, but those will take time. So if the fastest way to get it back up is just to recreate it, re-verify it. Cool. Um, I'm sure, well, I'm guessing that there won't be a, a follow-up to that from anyone. Okay. Um, Neoteric, uh, UK Limited, I, I, I hope you're satisfied um, with that response. Leon Bailey asks us, um, would advertising on a website with a page rank of two be wise uh, or just a waste of money? He says, goes on to say, it's it's related to my business niche. I mean, I wouldn't rely on just the page rank. I mean, you're looking for just generic advertising, and, and I'm assuming this is outside of SEO. So if it's related to your niche and it's sending you traffic, um, then it wouldn't be a waste. Of, well, and if the traffic is relevant and helps to convert, then it's not going to be a waste of money. So um, it wouldn't be <coughs> an area to worry about for an SEO perspective in terms of if it's just generic like advertising. Um, so I think that would be fine to give it a try if you think it's going to help to lead to conversions. One thing, I mean, I know no followers is a dirty word um, 
given the, the um, events of the last um, week or two. Um, but it, it should be pointed out that um, advertising links um, should always be no-followed, or, or at least uh, crawling should, if not no-followed, a crawling should be prevented uh, between the advert and the landing site. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Mm -hmm. All right, oh, we're ripping through these. Um, next one is for, for, for Banyan Tree Healing Centre, who has a question about local search. Banyan Tree says, so I followed the detailed advice from several different SEO professionals on how to optimise my G Plus business page um, to show up higher in local maps. Um, anyway, he says, I have more reviews and a stronger page than most of my competitors. And my actual website ranks high um, on the first page of inorganic search for my area. Yet my map listing is still struck low, um, still stuck low at like number 20. Can anyone think of a reason why this might be? So far, even the professionals I consult don't seem to hang a, have a clue. Um, stronger page, more reviews. Um, the only other one that, that I'm, and I'm not generally in the, the local SEO area, but the biggest one that you usually always hear about is um, location. So, yeah, if his... Um, he may have more reviews on a stronger page, but if his competitors are located in the main downtown area, that may severely outweigh all the other work he's put into it. Um, and that could be kind of an, area, an issue for him, for why he's not, uh, why he's, you know, quite a bit lower. Um, there could be other issues if his, his page doesn't have his um, listed uh, citations of... of um, so it doesn't have as many citations. Uh, if um, he's not properly matching up his profile to, to the to the listing, so like he doesn't have a local phone number or the address of his business on his own page, um, yeah, making sure that he's um, filling out the information correctly. Um, those are at least some of the things that I'm aware of when it comes to the local area, but I don't know. Um, I think must have talked, uh, Tim, sorry, is, is out of at the second, but in terms of at least the, the local search, those are some of the things you may want to look into to see, uh, in addition, whether or not those might be impacting him more than the uh, 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 reviews and, and kind of the stronger page content. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Um, let's move on to uh, a question from Niraj Kumar. Yeah, asking a, a little bit of a ph philosophical question: Is SEO all about marketing or proofreading and quality enhancement of online content? Um, he wants to know why every SEO expert talks in terms of marketing um, when speaking on search engine optimization. Is SEO all about marketing or is it about uh, proofreading and quality enhancement? Should we start a debate on this one? As it's quite, <laughs> quite a large amount of um, discussions on this theme, if I may say so. SEO, yeah. if we take it ad literam, should mean search engine optimization. That means to do, to touch every aspect necessary to boost your website in search rankings. But why would you want to do that? I mean. The purpose of SEO is in discussion here, if I understand correctly. And the purpose of SEO is to bring more 
of what you need to your website, either that you want to increase the sales, either that you want to gather more views if you have a photo website and so on and so forth or if you want to uh, maybe you're a presentation website a scientific presentation and you don't look for selling anything but you wish to draw attention of mm, a lot of people or more people to a certain aspect I mean SEO it's increasing the number of viewers I mean that's the basic aspect from that the viewers could become customers if you are to be selling something or they can become your I don't know followers if you are to present something and so on and so forth so I think it's more than marketing it's covering a way larger area at least that's my take on this yeah it's it's um, fairly sim similar the way I put it is um, SEO really is in the end you're you're not in the end if you're trying to rank better and which which in turn and, and really it's it's your your focus is on ranking better on the search engines uh, therein providing the traffic to your site and with the end goal of conversion and revenue at a profitable amount um, how that happens whether it's through the optimizing of the search engine whether it's through marketing whether it's proofreading or quality enhancements of your online content um, with as long as the area helps to in any parts of that funnel um, to me is a form of SEO yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Yeah, I I, I think that um, SEO is uh, um, about uh, increasing um, sales uh, on a website and anything that it takes um, to achieve that. Um. Arseny uh, Bolotsko is a strong supporter of the WCO Questions community on Google+. Um, he asks a question which I think is a misuse of the term uh, negative SEO. But anyway, he says, are there negative SEO implications from using display none uh, to hide content? Um, he's hiding uh, small portions of content. Uh, uh, Posting uh, post excerpts, uh, etc., um, when rendering responsive design for mobile devices. He wants to know uh, if there's any problem with using um, display none. If he's using it appropriately, there's there's nothing that would be problematic. That's not to say that um, the use of it doesn't doesn't do as well when it, the content or links in that section that's not to say that it could be better um, it, it you know, Google's been known to at least voice on the on the, the website Google's been knowing known to voice its uh, opinion that it would like all content to generally show up um, versus being having to be under a display none and having to click or uh, mouse over to see it and so from an optimization standpoint, it may be better to keep the content outside of the, the, and not really try to avoid the use of the display none. But yeah, you know, in the in the case of kind of rendering responsive to design for mobile devices, I, yeah, you, it, I think that that's okay as long. And it will of course depend on how it's being implemented, and you're not permanently hiding content in those areas. Um, but yeah, uh, so, and. In the end, as long as it's the same content you're displaying from the mobile bot to the mobile users, you're good. Well, I'm, my take on this is uh, just give the users the possibility to view that content. I mean, if you're applying the display none, just give the users uh, an interface interaction, maybe a button or a something to be able to click on it 
and see the rest of the content. In this way, Google will see that too and will know that you're not deliberately hiding the content for the SEO uh, purpose. I mean, uh, using it as a negative SEO. If you're doing that and you're not hiding like 70% of the content, or so you should be fine. Just keep in mind that Google do penalize for this <laughs> as a um, uh, as so-called cloaking, cloaking technique, hiding the uh, content for users and showing it only to search engines. So just stay away from this. If you can, if not, implement a, a way of users to be choose by themselves to view that content or not. To, and to just to clarify, make sure on that, it, it's not the usage of display none that's a cloaking technique. It, it's how it's being used that can be, potentially be a cloaking technique yes. um, in the negative sense. So, um, yeah, it's just making sure you're using it appropriately and then there's no issue. Excellent. Micah, uh, you have to leave us now and uh, drive off to work. Yep. Off I go. What time, is, what time is it in the US of A? It is 6.10 on the West Coast AM. You're a stronger man than me. Stronger <laughs> man than me. All right, mate. Uh, in safe journey to work then. Thank you. Take care, guys. Okay. See you next week, mate. Whoa, it's quite early. <laughs> <laughs> All right, did anybody have anything more to add on Display None? Okay, uh, Chris Sam Cloutier asks uh, or says that he's starting to get uh, a significant increase in traffic. Uh, he says, hi guys, uh, about midday yesterday I started to get uh, a strong increase uh, in traffic of about a thousand each day for the last two days. Unfortunately, it's to an attachment page that, that was accidentally ranked. And while I'm in, he says, uh, while I'm enjoying looking at the stats and the extra subscribers, I know that the people coming to the page aren't finding what they wanted. I am sure this is killing my bounce rate. Um, what should I do? I'm not sure that it'd be killing his mounts rate, and he might be surprised. They might be finding uh, exactly what they're looking for. Um, it depends on, uh, like, it could be that people are actually looking for um, that that attachment, um, that, so that they can use it on their own site, maybe, or, or you know, it just depends on what it is. Uh, um, and if it's generating new subscribers, I think that's an indication that. Uh, that was a certain indication that um, uh, people are finding what they're looking for. I think I last signed up a subscriber in 2001. Well, um, as far as I can see from the Chris comments below, it says it's an image file that creates, that created its own URL when add, when it was added, maybe you should enhance that image with some kind of, of text beneath explaining what's in that image. And that will surely help Google understand better that image and maybe those people are in fact looking for that image. That's beside the assumption that Google get that image description wrong and sends people who are looking for something to that image that means a totally different thing. So probably you should take advantage of this and try to serve users what they are looking for when they come to you. Maybe you can get some statistics to see in Webmaster Tools, Analytics, somewhere, what keywords are dragging them over there. Maybe you can catch up some of the keywords and you can from that uh, decide on what they are looking for. I don't know, maybe just take advantage of it. Try to, to enhance that page, not only by having the image and adding some text, and see how it goes. Yep. 
Uh, anybody else um, to add to Chris's answer? All right. Um, our next is from Scott Cohen. Um, he wants to know if um, this action will cause issues with Google. Um, he said, uh, I'm using a light box to display an email sign-up form. The plugin gives a template code that styles the content as display hidden. Very similar to that previous one. Um, he give, gives us a link to the development site. Uh, I won't quote it on air, but uh, you guys can see it there in your own list. Um, he said, click the button to see what I mean. Excuse the appearance, it's in the very early stages of development. Uh, is this going to cause issues with Google? I don't want to get penalised for hiding content, even though this is not an attempt to fool, fool search engines by any means. I should recommend that Scott um, also looks at um, the answer we just gave a moment ago uh, uh, to Arsene Bolotsko, which is uh, two questions earlier than... Uh, um, you'll see that on the, on the page on dumbseoquestions.com. Uh, he goes to the summary page and finds uh, his question. Um, just go two questions uh, above uh, his and he'll find the, the question uh, answered for Arsene Blotsko. But for, for, um, uh, for Scott, um, what's our answer, guys? Well, as far as I can see on his website, so far I can't find any text on this page. I mean, on the home page, uh, I only see photos, uh, slideshow of photos, but n not. He doesn't have any text on it, so I don't know what he's referring to. I was already uh, scrapped the source code, and I couldn't find any hidden text. So if you want to add a text and uh, this is a photographer website as far as I can see, try to add captions or maybe a short description below the picture, maybe add a detailed description of the place where you took the picture, maybe the hour or I don't know, something which can present interest beside the photo or maybe enhancing the photo with some description and that would surely help you and beside you Google to understand to better understand your pictures and better presenting them in search results excellent um, Arthur all right um, let's uh, I hope that's um, what you're looking for Scott um, let's answer a question from Connie Roberts um, she says, when you search my blog on Google, there is no description. Um, there is a description of my latest post. Um, what am I doing wrong? Well, that needs to be, we need to take a look on this. So maybe we can skip this question and get back to it a little bit later. Maybe I can have the time to take a look at it. Okay. All right then, let's do that. Um, Kim Ramirez asks, why has my website dropped from position two? Uh, he doesn't give much details. I don't know what's in the comments, guys. You, you can see them more rapidly than me. Um, he says, uh, my website uh, was in position two, uh, but now it's dropped out and, and uh, is now much slower. Um, what's wrong and any clues why it happened? Without more detail, um, it's hard to give a, a, a good answer to this, but um, um, maybe it could, the site could have been in, in, uh, in its honeymoon period. And by that I mean uh, initially, when a new site is loaded, it, it will rank more highly than it, it generally would um, for a time so that um, the, the responsiveness of the site and how uh, um, users uh, interact with the site uh, can be recorded. And, and from that, 
um, the site, uh, after that process is finished, the site does drop out, but then reappears at, at, at the, at the uh, ranking position that, that Google thinks it should be at. Um, so that's one thing that might have happened. Um, but without um, knowing more of the site, um, it's, it's hard to, to give a, a better answer. Anybody else want to add to that? All right, uh, Kim, I, I hope that's um, good enough for you. Um, Can we go back, Jim, to yes, the question yes, number 12? Yes. Uh, let's go back to um, Connie Roberts' question um, at um, question number 12. Yeah, he asks, uh, when you search for my blog on Google, there is no description. There is a description of my latest post instead. Why am I doing wrong? So I see that some of the users already answered him. Uh, what I want to add is that if you have no meta description on your page, Google will choose its snippet when he lists your uh, website on its search engine results by uh, uh, by taking in consideration the keyword and and trying to best matching with the content on the page so google choose a random description snippet from your page which it thinks it's the best match for the query so if you want to stop letting google choosing for you you should start creating your own unique and compelling descriptions for each page and try to do that for every page of your website. Create unique meta descriptions and you should be fine. Just keep in mind that the, the meta description should be related to the page content and should use as much as possible the words from within the page. Excellent answer. Uh, anyone want to add to that? Okay, Connie, I hope um, that's what you're looking for. Um, now I have a question um, from um, um, Dave Elliott. Um, Dave uh, is uh, a fantastic moderator on, on our Dumb SEO Questions community on Google+. Dave um, asks, has anyone got a filter that's definitely working for seomalt.com? Uh, he said they are the current bane of SEO oneness. Um, I have tried blocking them and taking them out of my analytics uh, in a few different ways and nothing seems to be working. Uh, he says I must just be being thick. He said it's quite likely, but I don't agree. Um, and he says, but has anyone got a filter that is definitely working? I'm I not see. sure I understand what he's asking. Well, I, I see SEO Malt um, in my results um, quite high on, on the list, but uh, my sites aren't probably any gauge uh, of what a normal site would be. But um, I, I saw the, the results there. I, I don't know exactly what, what, what they do. Are they some sort of directory? Let me have a look. They say they are a webmaster's analytics tool. Maybe it's a Google Analytics competition. <laughs> they. But how is he seeing them in his reports? I'm not sure I understand that. I, I, I see them with, with backlinks um, to my content. Oh, I see. Actually, strangely enough, can, can anybody else um, bring them up? Um, I think you might have to add dub 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 to make it work. Uh, they are not with dub dub dub, they are simple, just. Okay. Smalt.com. As uh, I can give you, uh, it's a green. What am I doing right? I can't get them uh, up. Just click on I've linked uh, in the chat. Just click on it. 
Oh, SE mods. Um, yes, yes. Uh, okay. So they are. I've heard of them before. You do need a user and a password. But I never tried them out, so. You have an, uh, uh, a page uh, which is uh, what, what they are doing. What's SEMALT? SEMALT is a professional webmaster analytics tool that opens the door for new opportunities of the market monitoring, yours and your competitors, positions tracking and comprehensible analytics business information. So probably they want to do a better job of what is now presented as Google Analytics. Hmm. So I don't know how to answer to this question for Dave Elliott. We should take a deep look into it. At least I have to do that before I can. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I see What's Alison Latimer has just joined us. Hey, welcome, mate. Hi, guys. Hey. What's news from the sunny Gold Coast of Australia, mate? Hmm. Uh, I've had horrible, horrible traffic getting to Brisbane for the last two days. For no good reason. It turns out people can't drive. <laughs> Took me two hours and ten minutes to get to work yesterday. And that's what about seventy k? Sixty two. <laughs> there was an accident on a road that's an interchange between the M1 motorway and the Gateway motorway, and it was on the interchange where all of the roads intersect. Chaos, just chaos. <laughs> anyway. All right, we're up to question fourteen on our, our run list. Um, let, let's let's um, jump on to that. Um, um, sorry, we've just covered question fourteen. Now answering question fifteen from Aman Bansell. Um, it's a query regarding anchor text optimization. Um, Aman says, "Hello, friends. Um, if I use the anchor text." tags as an internal link, then what's the issue? Uh, he says, I mean, if I am maintaining relevancy, um, why is it harmful? harmful? Um, because uh, even Wikipedia um, does the same thing. Um, so that's the question, I guess, uh, if I can um, clarify it as, uh, um, is there anything wrong with um, using anchor tags uh, um, as an internal link? As far as I'm seeing it, there isn't. I mean, it's quite okay to optimize your anchor text. Just try <laughs> as everything else on Google. There is a limit between optimization and over-optimization. And Google tends to, uh, to, gen to do a general thing about this. So just try to keep the amount of uh, uh, keywords staffed into the um, internal linking and outside linking to a normal amount. I mean, it's okay if you have uh, have the the anchor text optimized on the menu and on one two links within the content, but if you put twenty links with the same anchor text in the same page, even if it is within your content. That's a problem for keyword stuffing, okay? And that's penalized by Google. So that's my take on this one. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, I agree. I so it, it, it's um, really uh, all bets are off. Um, Within your own website, um, I, I think it's it's up to you to. Uh, apart from um, no following links within your own website, uh, I think you're really entitled to do uh, 
uh, anything you want um, and pretty much uh, get a, get away with it if, if, if get away with it is the right term. Matthew D uh, asks uh, or says uh, his site is not being indexed. He says, uh, I had some problems um, with my website, uh, with the site not uh, being cached properly. Yesterday I fetched my site through Google Webmaster Tools, um, but it's still not cached by Google. Uh, my site is uh, www.cheaphennights.co.uk. Um, I have been working on this site for the last two months and um, no keywords are, have, are yet showing uh, in Google um, well until the last page. Um, please suggest uh, what's wrong with this site. I'll put a link in the chat as soon as I get rid of the dots. It seems like Tim answered this one. Maybe Tim it's available to take on? No, maybe he's he's busy with the clients. Yes, he, he had a client uh, contact him. He said that uh, he would be unavailable for a few minutes. I'll put this link in the chat. It might be a new occupation for us, Alistair. We, we could run uh, hen nights. <laughs> that sounds like a riot. <laughs> I see, see Tim Cap is shaking his head. <laughs> All right. Um, so... Um, so fetching your page through Google Webmaster Tools isn't um, that that doesn't force Google to crawl and re-index the page, though, does it? it, it well, it, does, it, it helps. Does. Yeah, there is a feature there where you can ask, uh, uh, you can fetch as Googlebot, and then you'll get an option to. Um, um, submit that page, uh, submit page yeah. Yeah. Or and it's submit to how many times you can do it per month that's right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah you have 500 mm. but even though if you just uh, have it uh, as Tim mentioned you have it uh, indexed a day and you uh, refetch it and resubscribe it in the same day Google might not obey that so you should have a little bit of uh, chillness and wait for a day, maybe, to resubmit the same URL for recrawling and re-indexing. I wonder if this site um, has a problem because of its footer links. He's, um, he's listed um, many um, uh, capitals um, throughout uh, the European Union and uh, also uh, um, he's got another column there of footer links, um, you know, Birmingham, Blackpool, Bournemouth. Not sure if I'd want um, to do the hen nights in Blackpool. Oh, I see. It, there are not so many. I mean... I'm seeing a couple of, I mean, 20 of them, or maybe not that much, 30 of them. Uh, yeah, indeed, I'm seeing that Google cached pages on 29th of January last time, some of the pages. It's clearly that it doesn't come so often to visit this website, but unless we can take a look at the Webmaster Tools account. I don't know how can we figure this out. But as far as I can see, the homepage has been last crawled, as Tim said, on uh, 31st of March 2014. 
that's also two weeks ago. Maybe something is wrong. Maybe you have a lot of duplicate content. Maybe Google choose to crawl that those pages and skip the duplicate content. And maybe he didn't choose the pages you wanted to choose. So for a better view, I think, and to be able to figure it out, we need to see more than only your URL to give a short answer. And it's, at least that's my take on this one. Yeah, I mean, he's got 290 pages indexed in, or something like that, in against his domain. Um, I, I don't think there's necessarily a problem, other than the fact that it mightn't be updating as fast as he wants, but the, the pace that Google updates the index um, it is essentially subject to how important your website is. So you can... You know, for instance, in the bottom of his website, you can see that he's got uh, an HTML sitemap, an XML sitemap, and then a URLs.txt link. It doesn't matter how many of those things he has. It, he, he can't force Google to, to crawl his site, essentially. You know, you can submit the, um, the request through Google Webmaster Tools only a limited number of times. Once Google comes to the site and starts um, crawling the site to discover more URLs, they'll get put into a queue of URLs to, for Google to crawl um, at their pace and discretion. You, you can't force them to do it. If they don't want to crawl 250 additional URLs on his site because they don't deem the site important enough, they're just not going to crawl it. Yeah, and there is one more thing. Maybe he crawls it and he doesn't see any changes within the website. In this way, he will keep the cached pages at the latest point when he saw any changes. So even he comes to crawl each day. If you didn't change anything on that particular page from 29th of January, it's obvious that he will never uh, <laughs> get a, a earlier cache or latest cache. So just if you want Google to come crawl often than this, you just have to improve your content and bring fresh content. Yeah. So, uh, anecdotally, I would say he doesn't have a problem. You don't think the, the footer links um, might, might be causing him an, an algorithmic uh, dampening? No, because yeah, he doesn't have a main menu. I mean, yeah, that I mean, the thing, yeah, as look, he initially came with, oh, you know, my pages aren't being cached. Not about, uh, you know, even if you, even if a, a site that doesn't really have authority or is very popular at a particular time as he's still growing and building up is not going to be visited that often. Um, it's, it's, it, not. I mean, I would expect a site like that to be the the home page to for the for the home page itself to be um, cached potentially every two weeks. I, I wouldn't expect it anymore. And you know, um, so I would say his site's being cached. It is cached. Um, at the at the speed of that kind of you know that 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 how I would expect that site, um, yeah, he needs to do a lot of work on it and build it up. But I, you know, if he's talking about the caching, which he specifically asked about, I don't see any real problem with with that site as it is. He's got the site maps uploaded. It was cached three days ago. Um, he forced it again. I think he said on the. Tw the twenty something or other, which same again another five days prior. So you know uh, his homepage is within within the kind of range that I would expect on on that kind of site. Yeah. Okay. Moving along. 
Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of um, Blackpool uh, Hens Nights, uh, Tim, I think you'll love this. A, a few few years ago, uh, I, I was uh, we, Angie and I were, were flying from um, Barcelona to um, Newcastle um, in the uh, north of England. And um, in front of us in the queue, there were a whole lot of people heading for Blackpool. Anyway, it was all fun and games. They were, they were laughing about their, their holiday they were just going home from and the things they'd bought. And Anyway, the, the girl in front of us, uh, um, she um, copped uh, an, an excess um, weight uh, penalty for, for her luggage. And you know, with um, Ryanair, um, you, you you can go to a, another queue and, and uh, um, pick up um, uh, premium tickets so that you can get on board the plane, and so at least you get a chance to sit together. Um, but anyway, so we went over to that queue after we'd um, checked in, and um, also that queue must have been also for excess baggage because they had this girl. Uh, um, in front of us again, and this is where I picked up on on the accent. I just loved it. She said, "Fucking shaggers, fucking shaggers, never fly with Ryanair again." The fucking shaggers. <laughs> anyway, it, well, it was it, you had to be there, I guess. It was funny for me. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, um, our next is um, from. Uh, Gifts Galore, who's asked, they have asked us a number of questions uh, um, recently, and um, I think it's a good question. Um, she says, Does anyone use Fiverr, you know, that's F I V E dot com, uh, or is it a waste of time and money? Um, Gifts Galore goes on to say that uh, she is trying to get uh, higher page rank uh, in search engines. Aren't we all? Um, does anyone want to give us a, a summation of, of what you should and shouldn't buy from Fiverr? I'll give her a piece of advice. Stop worrying about Fiverr and start worrying about the quality of his or her website. If I came to giftgalore.com looking for, let's say that website did rank in the search results for some term I was interested in, there's no way I'd use it. I would just click back. The quality of the website, the design, layout, everything about that website um, doesn't have high enough quality for me to literally even offer a second click. Yeah. So I'd be far more focused on addressing that than worrying about using Fiverr for SEO, which I wouldn't do. Yeah, yeah, I definitely say that. In fact, uh, why don't you look for some design work on Fiverr? The only thing I would say is that I've had, um, you know, is if I've needed a logo tweaking or an image tweaking, um, and it's been a weekend and as we all, um, you know, and I basically haven't been able to get it done. None of the developers are around. I just can't get a hold of anyone. I've used Fiverr to get someone to tweak an image or a logo or whatever the case may be. And for that, it's brilliant. For anything to do with <coughs> SEO, just forget about it. I mean, if you think that um, an SEO professional um, will charge anywhere from 50 to 150 uh, an hour. Scale that down to do you honestly believe you are going to get quality work for five quid or five dollars, three quid? Yeah, do, 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 just, just, just literally think about it. Just stop and think. Um, yeah, but you know there are some great things on Fiverr, and I'm not knocking the site in that sense. I mean, I had, and and I'll give you a great example. Um, we were doing a campaign for a fruit juice. Uh, we were just doing some off stuff work for a fruit juice company, particularly apples. Now I won't go into the name of the company, but um, I literally paid five dollars to some bloke in the states who stood in Times Square. 
uh, on New Year's Eve with a massive apple and a sign, right? And that is just brilliant because I had a Times Square New Year's Eve apple. You know, yeah, it was it was brilliant for a fiver. You can't get images like that. You know, you couldn't even expect to. You know, so if you were going to buy something on Shutterstock or on Getty's or an image or have a designer make it, you wouldn't even come close. But anything to do with SEO, stay well away from fiver. Unless you're buying negative SEO. If you're buying negative SEO, go for it. But that's what this woman is doing, unfortunately. Mm. By the way, uh, what did we all think about um, uh, the post uh, made by the young fellow on um, the SEO Hangout panel this evening, um, showing that Google is accepting advertisements um, from Fiverr.com for the search term negative SEO? I'll put a link in the chat. Yeah, I've seen that. That's amazing. <laughs> You know how how they say keep your enemies close. <laughs> well, I mean, here's a situation where Google is 100% culpable um, for the rise of negative SEO. Um, it's their algorithm which created um, the potential for innocent sites to be damaged uh, by uh, negative SEO. Um, they are 100% culpable and then they turn around and take advertisements, make money from the carnage that they've caused. I think it's just disgraceful. If Michael Fisher-Kirshner was here, he'd accuse me of being anti-Google, but uh, I'm not. I'm just anti-criminality um, and this is just criminal. Nobody else is impassioned as I. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward. I don't think there is much to say about it. Just, did you report it? Um, I didn't know. So that should be reported. I mean, it's. Uh, I'm sure they would love to know about this. Probably because every ad gets approved, right? And somebody didn't do their job by approving that ad. Which AdWords policy would it contribute? I don't know. I is that the um, there? Google have got guidelines around which what ads they will run and won't run, right? If you don't fall into a bucket of keywords or topics that is a violation of their um, advertising guidelines, then you're essentially free to advertise. And this is just another thing that you might not like, but someone else does. You could find a thousand different things that you could advertise for on Google that might rub people the wrong way or be morally wrong or whatever. But this is a free, effectively a free speech thing in a sense that they can't be, you know, arbitrarily policing advertising around the world for everything that, you know, some subset of users doesn't like. Um, they've got guidelines around the things that they will and won't accept. It won't matter how strict they are with those things. Um, there will always be things over and above that that people think that they should be enforcing it for, like further reaching and stretching to police more groups of keywords. You know, I, this wouldn't even register on their list of I could care. That's it, isn't it? Though I mean, the, the damage it's causing to innocent um, businesses uh, around the world um, every, every day, more and more sites are bankrupted uh, because of it. Um, but look, when does it show up on their radar? Do, do you when? know what's hurting people, though, Jim? Um, if you are worried about that, do you know what's hurting people more than 
the, the prospect of having negative SEO and we've got no way to even quantify how big a problem that is versus the literally hundreds of millions of websites that exist on the internet. So the percentage of websites that would have ever been affected by negative SEO is beyond minuscule. I'm quite confident of that. But if, if you were ever worried about things that were impinging on someone's business, you should be worried more about the fact that competitors are just simply advertising. You know, if you're, if, if you're an innocent website that's been effective, affected in, in air quotes by negative SEO, um, you know, there'll be more damage being done, which is not the fault of Google, by simply having more savvy businesses advertising on Google and putting their website as a paid listing in front of some other small website that hasn't cottoned onto the fact that you can advertise. That will, that will cripple a website and a business long before the likelihood of someone being affected by negative SEO in a sense that you can pull huge volumes of traffic out of the search results just by running ads, which means the, the business that was some innocent bystander that was in position one that's never had competition before um, suddenly loses buckets of traffic because, because someone just chooses to advertise. How, that, that would be a far more broad reaching impact to businesses than the number of people that would have been affected by negative SEO. And I'm not saying that allowing advertising is wrong at any level, it's completely okay. But if you're trying to say negative SEO is bad, immoral, Google is, is somehow responsible for it, and look at all of these people that are innocently affected by um, negative SEO, look at the hundreds, thousands, millions of websites that are losing traffic because they don't advertise and a competitor does. That's, that's millions of websites. People that have been affected by negative SEO, a thousand. 10,000. As you know, Alistair, I have um, the, I mean, the, the measure of my respect um, for you um, is unbounded. Um, uh, I, uh, I just uh, um, worship um, um, the, every latest thing you say. I, I, I dwell on it and I write it down and take it away and think about it. Um, but... Um, I, um, you know, from running the ShopSafe group of websites, have personal experience of negative SEO. Um, and it started with us uh, uh, back in uh, 2007. Um, and so, you know, those uh, people that say that we're affected by Panda and Penguin, I'd just like to point out that they didn't appear to for, for much, much longer. Um, and so I know that uh, negative SEO works because um, uh, not only from Google Analytics logs, from our own logs, I know um, that um, you know we had cliff drop um, traffic drops uh, um, at, at each time that um, um, there was intense um, backlinking to our site from you know porn sites, from gambling sites. Um, there was uh, increased traffic from click farms in um, third world countries, um, that, that's, that sort of thing. So I, I know that it works and I've been screaming about it um, for years. But uh, I mean, back in 2010, um, Google was still denying that it was possible. Um, I still have um, uh, cache, like, like snapshots of... of um, uh, Google advice saying it's absolutely impossible, or not not in those words, of course, but absolutely impossible. Then they varied it to there is some chance, and now at least that they acknowledge that negative SEO works. But I believe um, that uh, websites um, only have to achieve uh, a commercially viable position um, to be affected by negative SEO. Um, as soon as they end up in position one, two, or three for any commercially uh, um, lucrative um, rank, um, they will be hit by negative SEO, and they won't even know what ha what's happened to them. And one day they'll be position one on Google, as they should be, because they're the best supplier of the product. Might be the manufacturer of the product, 
um, but that, that they will be um, not not just dropped down; they'll just be blasted out of the internet um, by negative SEO. The moment that the, it becomes uh, attractive to another person, and why would somebody pay Google's extortionate? Well, not extortionate, um, because uh, I'm, I'm an AdWords buyer, and uh, they're not always extortionate. But why would Google pay um, Google? A lot of money to advertise when they can just go to Fiverr and for 50 bucks they can buy a million links um, and, and blast the website out of the sky. Why, why would they do that? Um, so I, I say that the, um, the negative SEO um, is the greatest scourge of the internet. It's criminal um, and Google is the greatest criminal, one for creating it um, and two for knowingly letting it go on when they know that innocent websites are being impacted. They know in, in their um, algorithms there's a, a, an allowance for damage to innocent people. Um, and they every time they make an adjustment to their algorithm, inside there, there is a, an allowance for collateral damage. So they knowingly they are aware that innocent sites are being smashed out of the internet, and it's wrong, criminally wrong. Anyway, that's my uh, two cents worth. Um, and no, I, I don't think we're going to get blasted out of the sky. I think we're beyond that these days. I think we're just tolerated. Um, anyway, free speech, wonderful thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm not disputing that it exists, Jim. Just that. Um, the SEO community often exists inside a bubble and there's an echo chamber for stuff, right? So while I have no doubt that negative SEO um, probably exists and and ShopSafe as an example um, could very well have um, fallen victim to that, you know, in 2007, all I'm saying is I just don't think, what, while you would characterise that as being as soon as you become position one for a commercially viable term, you're a target, I just don't think that that's a reality. I think that the number of websites that would have actually been affected by negative SEO compared to, as an example, the number of websites that would have been affected over the last two years or three years by a simple algorithm update from Google, and I'm not talking about things like Penguin or Panda, just you know, any one of the 500 plus changes that Google made to the algorithms last year, um, which causes websites to go up and down in the search results, um, will eclipse um, anything that anyone would ever dream of putting forward as the prospect for negative SEO. So people will go on and on and on about negative SEO, and it, but it's like tomorrow Google will make um, an update to um, websites that, uh, well, it's the page speed one, right? How fast does your website rank, uh, load? And, the, and they increase the, the in impact of that by a, a small fraction. And then suddenly, um, 500,000 websites drop by 10 positions or five positions in the search results because they're deemed by Google to no longer have as good a customer experience as the websites that load fast. Why don't you cry foul about that? To, Why well, don't you cry I think, I think about it's people that have been penalised because of um, penguin abusers and over optimization of anchor text? Have or no problem with any of that. Stuffed, or um, you know, there's there's a litany of things that go into the ranking algorithms at Google, um, and every single time they make a change, it doesn't matter how big or small the change is. They're changing the order of the search results, which means someone wins and someone loses. If you're the guy that was at position one and suddenly you go from one to six, that could literally mean um, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars of losses of revenue, depending on the business, um, because of that change. And it's not because Google's targeting them. They're just making a change to improve the quality arbitrarily as... as they would see it, right? Um, and I, I, that, that, and my, my point, though, is that 
changes like that that are just part of the everyday ecosystem of Google, where they're literally releasing at least one change to their system publicly to the internet every single day, will have bigger impacts on any given day, potentially, than the total impacts across the course of the year of negative SEO. That's kind of what I'm getting at. I'm not saying that negative SEO doesn't exist, just that I just don't think that it's substantially large compared to the number of websites that would be affected by any given algorithm update, regardless of how small they are, the changes. Fair enough. And look, one, one point you made about Panda and Penguin and um, you know the, uh, al algorithm changes. Um, I, I got no problem with that. I I, I applaud um, Google for uh, that. Uh, they improved the quality of the, the internet. Um, but the difference between uh, th them and negative SEO is that this is Google um, implementing an uh, a, a uh, an algorithm which affects websites on what is virtually a level playing field. But negative SEO, there is no level level playing field. Um, and, and, and I think in, in time to come, eventually people will blab, people will come out, um, and big brands like Amazon uh, down to, you know, all the tier one sites, I would say that negative SEO is standard practice um, inside uh, the, those big uh, in-house uh, SEO machines. Um, the, 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 because what, why not? What, why pay to advertise over somebody when it's much cheaper just to blast the site out of the sky? <laughs> just, just point a million links uh, to the site, it's gone. Um, even if they do recover um, uh, over time, um, um, they'll only get 80% of their traffic back. Um, so even that, that's a win. Um, yeah, the, 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 anyway, the, that's, that's my beef uh, over with. Um, anybody else uh, with a comment on Fiverr? All right, uh, let's move on to um, Greg Kristen's question. Uh, will having a small percentage of pages submitted um, which are added to the index negatively affect my site? Yes, I say if a site uh, has a large amount of pages submitted to Google, yet only a fifth of those come back as indexed, um, will there be a negative effect um, with Google's algorithm? But Google see this as a site that potentially might have a low user experience uh, with so many pages not able to be indexed and thus create a soft penalty um, which would cause my site not to show in search results. I don't think so. Um, I, I'm pretty sure Google have talked about this in some of their webmaster videos before, where the question was something like, um, I need to add a lot of pages to my website. Should I add them in teeny tiny increments? Or is adding you know, a lot of content to my site in one hit OK? And I can't remember the, the size of the numbers, but the example might have been, I need to add 100,000 pages to my site. Can I do it in one hit, or do I need to do it in chunks? Um, and I think Matt Cutts came back and said something like, you know, it probably won't hurt, but if you could release them in stages of, let's say, 10 or 20,000 at a time, that's probably better than putting 100,000 of them in one hit, something along those lines. Um, in the context of this, though, I think it's kind of a similar problem. Um, I, I, I don't think that you're going to be penalised because of it, though. Just... Mm -hmm. I, Go on. I think I might have a load of this. Indexed. And that's create stuff. 
I don't think there's a connection between. I don't think you know, Google would have anything uh, which connected, um, you know, the, the the choice to index um, pages with um, how, how the, they are to be ranked. I, I can't see any logical connection. Well, to some degree, it might speak to. Um, information architecture or technical issues within a site. Um, it, it could also speak to the quality of the site in general in a sense that if you spin up a new website tomorrow and, and your site has a million URLs in it, as an example, um, and Google's not willing to crawl a million URLs for your site because it's new and fresh, um, what 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 would Google think of a site that launched cold, brand new tomorrow, with a million URLs? They'd have a very jaundiced view. Sorry. They'd have a very jaundiced view. Yeah, that's right. So, I, I think that not, that's not to say that the site can't become good quality just because it launched with a million URLs. It doesn't instantly mean that it's bad quality, but you can see how having Google having an understanding that the site is very, very large um, and not being willing to crawl it. For instance, as they as they crawl down a, um, a page hierarchy or through a site hierarchy and they keep discovering more and more and more URLs, that doesn't mean they crawl them obviously, right? They use the crawl to discover more URLs and then they queue those URLs for crawling. But if your site doesn't have enough equity or page rank, those URLs simply might not get crawled. But it gives Google a sense that, okay, I'm willing to crawl a thousand URLs for this domain. But after crawling a thousand URLs, I can already see that there's half a million URLs available for me to crawl. I've discovered them. I'm just not willing to crawl them yet. So you can see in my head, I could say, okay, well, I could see how if you were to take that to the extreme, um, it could look a bit suspect that something a bit weird and funky is going on. I mean, very rarely could you add that volume of content to a site and genuinely add good quality content, you, you know, over a very large number of URLs. I don't know. Yeah. But, but I think, to your point, though, I don't think, in general, I don't think that you'd get penalised for it. Um, but... If Greg has got a position where he submitted a lot of content to Google and only one fifth of the content in his site is indexed today, um, I would be probably doing a slightly different exercise and I'd be reviewing the site structure, for instance. I'd crawl his own website with another crawler like um, Xenu Link Sleuth or Screaming Frog or whatever it's called um, or some other website crawler and make sure that another crawler could actually crawl a, you know, a number of URLs that he thinks is close to the total number to make sure that he doesn't have technical problems that would preclude Google from being able to crawl the other four-fifths of his website um, and then start thinking about Oh, it is my site structure well structured? Is it very, very deep where he's got layers and layers and layers and layers of content and it's very, very difficult for Google to get from right at the top of the site structure through all of the layers down and down and down? Or is it very, is it very flat and very, very wide? Um, and start thinking about how that structure looks in his website um, to make sure that he's linking from his homepage into all of the the hubs within his website, for instance, to help Google get deep into the content. Yeah. I, I was thinking, I, don't, I didn't even know this question was coming up, but I was thinking of this the other day, and uh, um, I, I wonder uh, whether it m might be just um, a coincidence that um, about the same time as Panda and Penguin hit, Google started um, showing us um, the, the, how much was uh, being um, crawled and, and how much was, was being indexed. Um, but 
I wonder if it's possible that um, Google might be looking at the content that's being crawled, um, assessing it um, against the same um, criteria they use to assess sites for panda and penguin, and um, deciding, well, they're going to knock it out um, later anyway. Um, why not knock it out at, at the, the the initial point and uh, not in, not index it in the first place? Well, they they do do that, Jim, um, and and they've said so. Um, if you go to the um, the how Google works or how search works website within Google, um, there's a page in there where it has. Um, the pages that Google's dropping from the index that are spam, and they keep flicking up under the screen. Um, those pages that Google identify like that, that Matt Cutts refers to as pure spam, so to speak, they don't even make it to the index. So they crawl them and they just drop them straight off the cuff. So you know they're not even meeting a quality threshold to to get crawled and have some amount of life within the index doesn't guarantee visibility, but they're not even getting to that point. So they've certainly got the capacity to crawl and instantly drop content. Mm. Uh, speaking of instantly drop content, uh, Tim, did you have anything more to add to this? No, apparently not. Uh, okay. Um, I have a question now from um, Pablo, uh, who asks, is it a bad idea to have two links with the same anchor text? He says, uh, I have two internal links linking, linking to the same URL. Um, which anchor text counts? Uh, the first one, right? Uh, is it a bad uh, uh, idea to have um, the same uh, two links? Um, should I make the second link no follow? Thank you. I see in the comments, um, Mike Fisher Kirshner came out with a, a few studies, uh, one on Moz and the other on uh, SEO.com, and uh, Federico Sasso um, obliged um, with a, a, another link uh, on Moz.com. Right, sorry, I just realised what the question was. Um, no, it's not going to hurt anything. Uh, Google used the first link that they discover, it's the first anchor text within the page pointing to the URL, I think, um, is the the last stuff that I'd read from Google on that front. Um, I haven't tested that for a very long time, though. But it might be worth checking again. Um, but if you've got two links linking to the same page with different anchor text, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, I certainly wouldn't worry about adding a nofollow or anything like that. In general, I think when you start getting down to that level of finesse, so to speak, um, you're probably overthinking it in mm. general. Uh, you, th there's much bigger things for you to be worrying about, about the, the, the health performance of your website and the marketing of your website than worrying about two links pointing to the same page and no following the second one. I, there's bigger fish to fry, I think. Yeah. Totally agree. Uh, anybody else? All right, so Pablo, I, I hope um, you're happy with that. Devin Peterson, also a, a strong supporter of um, the Dumb SEO Questions community on Google+, Plus, uh, tells us that uh, my his Google Webmaster Tool crawl stats have shown a, a, a large increase in pages crawled over the past month. Um, not to be confused with page index, that, that hasn't changed. But the traffic hasn't changed much. Um, the only other thing that's different is that my page speed has been improved. 
Um, could there be possibly a connection? Um, what else could I infer from this increase in Googlebot activity? Well, the simple one would be that uh, Devon's made changes to his robot.txt file, as an example, and that means that he's got more URLs to crawl. Yeah. Um, okay. I, th there's, I think you'll find that there's research kicking around online that shows that fast, um, fast loading web pages um, increase the crawl rate from Google. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's too small a thing to be useful, to be honest. But um, I moved the hosting for my one of my blogs um, last year from an Australian web host to a US web host. Um, and which basically meant that the website became a lot, lot geographically closer to Google because they crawl from the US. Um, and it basically meant that the crawl, the average time downloading a page went from 1,000 to 1,100 milliseconds down to about 300 milliseconds or something like that on an average page. Um, and what ended up happening at the same time was that Google um, started crawling more pages at the same time. Um, but you know the site was so small that it was hard to see. But I'm sure if you were to go and find a big site with a lot of pages, um, that would be more easy to measure. Right. Okay, man. By the way, do you, have you been talking to Stephen uh, since his appearance with us um, two weeks ago? Uh, yes. I, I I send him invitations, but I, I I wonder if he logs under Google Plus much. No, not a lot. Okay. I wonder if you wouldn't mind encouraging him to turn it on next Thursday night. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Excellent. All right, um, Devon, I, I hope uh, that, that answers um, your question or you're happy with uh, our answer. Uh, Niraj Kumar uh, has a, a, a question that's asked, asked a lot. Um, he says, one page of my website is being linked uh, um, from many pages of another website. Uh, is this okay or is it harmful? I think currently it's just you and I, Alistair, um, I, I, uh, Mike, uh, sorry, not Mike, well actually Mike, I had to go to work. Um, um, Arthur was um, called out uh, to a meeting. Um, Rob's on the phone to a client, I think Masataki's the same. Um, and I think Tim's also dealing with a client. Yeah. So it's just you and me, mate, just you and me. Cool. Um, so for Niraj, I think no, um, it's not really harmful. It's obviously, it's pretty common for a website to have a particular page that's really popular, whether it's the home page or a resource page on their site that has lots of really useful information that lots of different websites link to. Um, that's pretty normal. I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Um, it would be a different scenario if it was being spammed um, like we talked about earlier, um, with lots and lots of irrelevant links going to the page, that would be a different scenario. But if it's um, if they're good quality websites or relevant websites that are linking to you, um, and and you're happy in general that they're linking to you, I would not really be worried about. It. Fair enough, man. All right. Um... 
question 22 on our run list um, is a question from Pale Jane again. And, and when I um, entered this one in onto the run list, I couldn't get a grip on, on what he was actually asking. Uh, see if you can make sense of this. Um, essentially, he said, uh, organic traffic or paid ads get traffic. Um, which one is best for SEO keywords ranking? That doesn't make sense, does it? Well, not really. So there's no direct link between um, using paid search through AdWords with Google and organic rankings. Um, it doesn't matter if you advertise or you don't advertise. Your rankings aren't going to change as a direct result of you advertising. Um, so that that's the first part of the question. Uh, first part of his sort of question answered. Um, so if he wants to improve his SEO rankings, um, there's other things for him to do that has got nothing to do basically with paid search or, or paid advertising with Google, um, such as making sure his website can get crawled by Google, making sure that it's indexed properly, making sure that he's got unique title tags on all of his pages, good quality content, um, that his content is linked to from other good quality, reputable, related websites to his particular website, um, all of those kinds of things, but not the fact that you're running paid search ads. Right. Okay, um, I'm going to skip the next question um, regarding uh, accessing the, the Keyword Planner tool. Um, so, Brad Sachs, I, I think that was answered for you anyway on, on the um, uh, Dumb SEO Questions community on Google+. Um, and um, also, um, the next one um, we've pretty well covered is um, um, from uh, Ratimi uh, Aramaloy, uh, who asks what the new profile views things all about. Um, I think we've pretty well covered it, unless you want to make a comment on it, Alistair. Um, Let's go down to question 25 uh, on our run list uh, for an interesting one. Uh, David Jones uh, says, I have just submitted a disavow file to Google. So I've, I've been doing some backlink cleanup um, for a site that's been penalised. I have already had quite a few links removed and I have just submitted a disavow file um, with the websites that um, would not answer my request uh, for removal. Just should I wait to see uh, if uh, there's any reaction from the disavow before I submit the reconsideration request or do it right away? Um, okay, um, I've got some thoughts on that. Uh, if, if you'd prefer not to answer or you go ahead. Yeah, well, if he's got a manual penalty and he has to submit to recon, he might as well just submit to recon now. Um, Webspan team, when they review the recon, will have access to the disavow file and they can cross-reference. So, um, also, if you've got a manual penalty, submitting a disavow is not going to have any impact anyway. So, you might as well just file your recon now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, uh, David Jones. Um, um, I hope that's a good answer for you, mate. Here's another one um, that was just um, lodged uh, just before we um, came on air with th this broadcast. Uh, Dave Elliott asked. Uh, how does Google handle alternate spellings these days? Uh, he said, basically, I've noticed on Webmaster Tools that some people are searching for advisor, with it spelt with an O, rather than advisor, spelt with an E. He said, I always optimize for advisor, with an E. Um, is Google clever enough to work out that they are one and the same? 
He said, I know the answer should be yes, but is it? Um, the search engine result pages I am getting for um, colour and colour, spelt with the uh, UK spelling and the American spelling, uh, and uh, advisor and advisor are different enough to suggest that it does make quite a bit of difference. So how would you deal with this? Uh, stick to one and get over it. Um, do a, a couple of instances of each. Um, do a page about differences between advisor, advisor, and, and the confusion it can cause and stuff in every key phrase that involves advisor, advisor into it. He said that with a smile. Um, even if there are 30-ish that this applies to. Or something else. Very interesting question. Mm. Okay. Out of fly, Jim. You're off. Um, okay, Alistair. Uh, thanks, thanks very much, mate, uh, for your contribution. I look forward to seeing you next week with Stephen. Trapped yeah, in your I'll, uh, I'll see if I can drag him along. <laughs> okay, mate. We look forward to yeah. it. See you, Tim. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, um, that's a very interesting one. Um, Google, well, I remember seeing a Matt Cutts video, says they um, try and recognize synonyms, uh, or they do recognize synonyms, and he has said to, where possible, um, use different synonyms uh, on page. However, when you're talking advisor and advisor, it's going to be quite difficult to make it look good still and readable to a user. Hmm. His difference page sounds very good. Um, and maybe also if he is doing that kind of a service, for example, he would talk about advisors, blah, 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 then potentially say our advisory service offers. Now, I know you're not specifically saying advisor, but he is at least getting some form of a synonym in there, which potentially could still read very well and look good. Um, yeah, interesting question. Yeah. Well, Dave, I, I hope um, um, that's uh, something new for you. But uh, I, I have to say, that Dave's uh, knowledge uh, is pretty good. Have you been looking at his um, responses on the uh, WSGA questions community on Google Plus, Tim? Oh yeah, Dave Stella. He yeah, uh, he's he's fantastic. Would that be because he's an Englishman, do you think? <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Just quality, mate, pure quality. <laughs> <laughs> Neoteric uh, UK Limited uh, asks, which factors make Google show local listings on organic results? Uh, he said, I have tried for London hotels. Uh, it shows, but not for London design agencies. Why is this? Right, well, as far as I can make out, um, uh, my own personal view on that is um, map listings or local listings will only be triggered when a specific category that is offered by uh, Google Places is actually used. Now, uh, design agencies is not in the categories and therefore has not triggered it. Um, so, so yeah, um, if you stick to the categories, they tend to trigger it. But of course, that's only a theory, um, uh, and only Google tends to know. Excellent. Um, all right. Uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Young.
But note that I, I put in the um, uh, chat. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, no problem at all. All right, understand. Okay. Um, Dominic um, Learwood asks another interesting question. Um, um, he said, um, how do you calculate the potential SEO traffic um, for a position one ranking keyword? Um, he said that there's so much noise in, on, on this topic. Um, if you know a tool where it shows up or any other useful calculations for this, please help. Thanks. Well, apparently he's not going to be worried about noise here. I hope you guys have got a clue on this because I haven't. Um, let me read it again. Well, um, doesn't uh, Edwards um, give a clue on this? If, if you uh, add that in the um, keyword testing tool, it, it'll give you a, an idea of. Um, uh, the amount of impressions it will get, and uh, we'll also calculate uh, um, from looking at your site um, um, how many potential clicks that you might get. Yeah, AdWords. Yeah, AdWords will give you an idea on that. <coughs> Fair enough. Well, Dominic, um, we're, we're running out of steam at this stage. It's 1.36 a.m. in Australia. Um, I hope um, uh, that will be enough. Um, look, uh, if it's not, uh, if you'd be so kind as to ask uh, this question again uh, on, on the SEO questions community, um, if, if I see it, uh, I, I will make sure we do some research, or at least I do some research and um, have a better answer for you. Is it question 28? Um, yes, it, yes, it is. Because Dave Elliott and um, <coughs> SEM Rush responded, and Dave Elliott's, I think, answers are quite on point. What was that? Uh, SEM Rush uh, answered on 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 our community. Yeah. Ah, SEM Rush. I wonder if that's how uh, we came to get the email, Tim. Ah. Yeah, quite and possibly. A good note uh, by Dave Elliott. Uh, it's always an estimate, so keep that in mind. Yeah. Oh, that's most interesting. I'll have to have a have a look there. It's been such a busy couple of weeks. I really haven't done my homework. Um, here's one from um, uh, Jeff uh, Guest. Um, he said, and, and when I put this one in too, I, I couldn't really figure out what he meant, but I'm sure you guys will know. He said, "Does it matter what I call the home page?" Uh, he said, when building a site in WordPress, I create a template for the home page and the content for the home page appears as a widget along with everything else, sliders, forms, etc. The address is obviously going to be www.domainname.co.uk. Um, the home page uh, appears in the navigation as home, although the page title can be actually anything. He said, and, and that is my question, uh, even though that page's content will only appear as the domain name where any page, any other page will have an address and title, like www.domainname.co.uk slash my hyphen optimized hyphen page. He said, does it matter what I call the home page? 
as its title will never be seen? Or is there some benefit uh, to optimising that particular page's title? I don't get that. I mean, if someone clicks on uh, this navigation link, surely he's going to go to the root domain, isn't he? What's, the, what, what's he going to land on? Does that make sense or am I, am I going mad? I don't quite understand either. <laughs> but Tony Kelly has responded in the community and Jeff Guest thanks him. So I suppose Tony did answer his question. Okay. Can you um, tell us what uh, Tony said, um, Mr. Taki? Just uh, to quote, if your homepage is always going to be your www.domain.co.uk, then there's not going to be much benefit changing it to anything else. If you did change it, you may have a home page for your domain.co.uk, but the home button of your menu may link to domain.co.uk slash changed page title, which could cause a fair bit of confusion for users. Probably the best, probably best to leave your home page as it is and obviously optimize the title tag, meta, description, h1, etc., as you would normally do for any other page. Hope that helps. Fair enough. Well, thank you, Tony Kelly. We should put Tony on the payroll too, uh, Mr. Taki. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, next, we have a question from uh, Sanyam Kurana. Uh, if I tag my posts in two or three different categories, uh, is it good SEO or a bad practice? Well, it all depends whether his tags are indexed and uh, followed. Uh, if they're indexed and followed, you are eventually, as your site builds up, going to create a mass of duplication across your site. Because well, Tim, I, asked, I did ask him that uh, in, uh, on the community, and he's talking about categories, not tag pages. Because I was confused, too. I thought he was... Uh, talking about tech pages, but he is posting uh, the same uh, post in different categories. Um, he gives an example because I asked for it. Okay, well that's not cool. No. Uh, no. Um, um. I think if you keep it uh, uh, the way he does it, he does it in uh, two or three categories, it's okay. Um, if you put in like 10 or 20 categories then... Yeah, yeah, yeah then it's going to get confusing. Um, what... I mean, what you can ultimately do uh, is he talking it the actual snippet shows up in those categories because if the snippet shows up on the ca in those categories and someone clicks on the article and reads the article the question is what is the URL of that article does the URL of the article always remain the, the same URL, the URL is uh, uh, the same it's uh, uh, oh, yeah then, the URL then it, itself it doesn't uh, the, the category name isn't mentioned. So. Yeah, then, then, yeah, then that will be fine. Um, you know, ultimately, it's going to build up by doing this. Uh, yeah, you need to be careful with this. Yes, indeed. Yeah, you need to be really selective. A selective. Don't just like every article you post add to three categories. I would be very selective of what article goes in. If it will fit into two, it'll fit into two. If it only fits into the one, it only fits into the one. I'd just be very selective because over time this could cause a problem. But yes. At the yes. minute, I think it looks fine. I, I fix it too. Uh, he does it for uh, 
user experience point of view. And yeah, as yeah. far as I can see, I but this is normal. Google understands this. Google doesn't penalize yeah, you for this. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, but keep it to a minimum. Uh, don't go overboard with this. If it makes sense for users, that's probably okay. Mm -hmm. I would say. Yep. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't sound like a clever plan to me. Um, all right. Um, well, to be fair, some. Um, Large words, I still say, but uh, sometimes it's it's quite confusing. So it's a little slippery slope. Uh, I agree, Jim. I mean, programmatically, uh, he's, I'm not sure how it would work in WordPress, but um, I mean, it'd be legitimate to have um, um, a site with a, with a, a, a different category. Uh, um, t title on the page, but still at least being under the same URL each time. Um, I mean, that would be possible to do, but making the same content on three or four or maybe 30 or 3,000, I mean, where's the limit? Um, how, how much do you want to cannibalize? Well, the, the URL stays the same. Uh, um, oh, the he does, does keep it the same URL. Yeah, oh. yes. Yeah, fair enough. No, well, then I take it back. It doesn't sound like a stupid plan. But uh, well, if you implement a Brett as Scrum or uh, those things, uh, well, how you will, I don't know how you would program that into the system he has now. So. Fair enough. Well, look. Speaking of breadcrumbs, Carol Soja asks uh, or says, uh, I added breadcrumbs. Uh, using schema.org specification to my site about a week ago. How long should I wait to see uh, to see it uh, in, in the structured data report in Google Webmaster Tools? I have tested updated pages with, with the Google Trust, with the Google structured data test tool uh, and it appears that breadcrumbs are implemented correctly. I'll, I'll put my hand up for this just for a, um, um, a, 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 a just one little snippet. Uh, I think uh, Google chooses whether or not to, to display breadcrumbs, um, and um, just because you have them properly set up uh, doesn't necessarily mean that they will be uh, um, placed in into the search engine results page. Yeah, and um, say that. Go ahead, master. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Didn't they say that they don't use schema.org breadcrumb uh, markup? Ah, yes, I think so, you're right. Um, that's true. I cannot remember the source, but I think you know. I think that was mentioned before that you know Google will detect breadcrumb type navigation, but it will not. Um, it will not. You know, it will not. That will not be on the basis of any schema.org. Breadcrumb marker. Ah, hang on, guys. I'm looking at uh, in a Webmaster Tools for a client site, and in my structured data, I have got breadcrumb markup showing up. Yeah, same here. Seven. So I'm not so yeah. sure whether they've changed in the meantime, but I think it used to be the case that they didn't use breadcrumb. Yeah. And obviously, they do list <laughs> in the Webmaster Tools schema, sort of markup section, things that they don't. Yet use right. Mm. I don't well, think they use image object or image gallery, for example. And the way I but understand that, this, step, but um, didn't they just there, last? Sorry, carry on. Go to uh, Tim. Didn't they just say that they're fully integrated now with Schema last week, or there's there's a much larger portion that they understand now? Oh, I missed that an announcement then. <laughs> But um, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, is look, um, uh, for um, obviously f for this for this question, um, as long as you've got your sitemaps sitemaps there, um, it will you know when it finds your page, it will 
it will start adding them to your webmaster tools. So assuming it um, hits a couple of pages uh, every every three or four days, um, they'll start showing up with inside of you know uh, when it finds your pages. Um, so I mean, this it's they'll find them when they find them. But also, uh, I mean, Google does reserve the right to display, um, you know, a particular markup. You could have it all added into your site, um, but they reserve the right to display it. Yeah. I, I also think that um, there are multiple teams working here. Um, you'll have the schema uh, markup, which is under Google's control, and, and there's a team working on that. And you have the teamwork on the Google Webmaster tools and the team for the um, uh, the search engine result page. And are, from memory, um, they don't always work to get it well uh, with Brett Scrump and Schema.org. Um, last time I used um, Brett Scrump, I used uh, the data. Uh, what was it? Well, you can look it up on uh, Google. And I think uh, you're doing a hangout with uh, David Emmerich and AJ Cole, and they discussed the uh, uh, same question. So let me dig into that and find a link for you. OK. Um, let's. Um um, temporarily put Carol Sage's question uh, aside um, to give um, Edwin plenty of time to find that, that link. Um, and we'll quickly run on to a um, question from Greg Christan, uh, who says uh, he had a pure spam penalty for a client uh, removed, from, removed by Google recently. Uh, has anyone else... Um, Remove this type of penalty. What is he um, asking a question or skiding? Um, uh, if so, did you? He goes on to say, if so, did you or did you not uh, notice any changes afterwards? Um, the changes could be traffic, um, keyword rankings, etc. Thanks, Greg. I think he's skiding. <laughs> Did he answer my question? Uh, the team? Um, okay. Well, look. Before we, while we're talking about uh, thinking about Greg Christian's question, let's go back to Carol uh, Soja's question. Um, go ahead, uh, Edwin. Oh no, no. I was referring to uh, Greg Christian. Ah, oh, sorry. I, I did ask him what he mean, uh, mean by a pure uh, penalty. There are so many penalties. Um, you cannot answer it in, if, if we don't know which penalty you will have. So, uh, and he didn't answer. So, don't think right. we can answer that. Okay. Maybe Greg just wants to. Yeah. Um, hang on. The. Um, there, there are, you know, uh, a lot of different manual penalties, but the pure spam basically uh, is when the site's pages, um, uh, you know, when they're using um, auto-generated content, scraped content, cloaking, hidden texts, sneaky redirects. Um, do, do you know what I mean? So. Um, You know, if 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 the, I mean the, I mean, <laughs> no, I don't know of anyone that's had a pure spam uh, penalty because personally, I don't know of anyone that was stupid enough to do that to their site. Um, but if you've cleaned it up and the uh, manual penalty uh, was revoked, um, you know, you need to also build up trust again. You need to start creating more content without all the spam, and um, you know, 
start proving uh, and build it up because as with all manual penalties even once they're removed you still have to build trust and um, I know John John Mueller is quoted as saying that even when a penalty is removed there's the trust factor that needs to be regained so you still need to work on it you are not going to bounce back to where you were um, uh, you need to create more content without the spam um, and get users visiting your site uh, if they ever visited your site because of course you must remember that your whole page you know I mean I don't know you don't go into what how you spammed yourself but um, you know if it was really terribly you know let's say keyword stuffed nobody would have really spend time on your site anyway because it just would have not read properly um, so, but yeah, it's going to take some time, and you need to prove to Google now that you're you're clean and you're going to stay clean. Yep. Okay. Well, how about we call this one answered and go on to the next? Some um, was. Um, um, oh, wait a minute. It looks like, um, yes, we have. Uh, we've covered um, all of our questions. Unless we want to go back to uh, um, Carol uh, Sage's question, Mr. Yon. This is the question I added breadcrumbs using schema.org spec uh, to my site about a week ago. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm still uh, searching to uh, uh, video. I think it's somewhere at the end. Uh, let me do this after the Hangout, uh, Jim. I will find uh, the queue time and uh, add uh, the link. Uh. All right. Um, well, look, uh, while you're doing that, I'll, I'll move on to the uh, um, weekly news roundup um, uh, segment that we do. Um, each week, of course, we answer the questions asked in the, the dumb SEO questions community on Google+. Plus. Um, and um, also, we have a, a sister community, uh, um, the SEO news uh, community. Um, and there, we try to gather the uh, um, news items that have occurred in the previous week, and then we discuss them. Um, Actually, I'll, I'll um, um, the first one actually is from uh, Edwin Yonk, um, who um, made a post titled that the incredible impact of, well, he, he shared a post uh, with the title of uh, the incredible impact of knowledge cards on Google Glass results. And this was an, an article from AJ Cohn, um, one of our heroes here on, on WCA Questions. Um, um, Edwin said, that although the article is about Google Glass, the same cards are, are, are almost the same um, that, that are used um, within Google Now. He said, I also like the comments from AJ, um, therefore I am not sure about the knowledge graph. And uh, I don't know what he means uh, by, by that. Um, but I'm sure um, Mr. Young can tell us. Well, this uh, it's uh, uh, you can combine it uh, with with not post uh, which I posted in the SEO news community. It's about a uh, rather uh, old article. Uh, the article was from uh, Wikipedia, which is quite a negative site about Wikipedia. Um, there they say the uh, traffic to Wikipedia went down because of the normal graph. Uh, uh, however, uh, uh, Sarah Inches, the director of uh, Wikimedia uh, so, uh, Edwin, uh, Edwin um, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but um, is there anybody else getting Edwin through uh, really badly broken up so that it's unintelligible? <laughs> No? Yes or no? It is a bit garbled, yes. Yeah. Look, is this Edward, uh, 
Kick or tell a week on that. Yeah, no, no, no. Stay yeah. on, um, but uh, just cut cut down the bandwidth. Uh, I mean, you're such a good-looking bloke, but we can remember that. <laughs> uh, cut cut the camera out and just give us yeah. the voice. Oh, okay. Um, well, the, um, the article uh, uh, from uh, Knowledge Graph or Knowledge Cards and Google Glass can be com combined with uh, another post um, about um, Wikipedia. Uh, it's published on uh, Wikipediocracy, which is quite a negative site about Wikipedia. And there they combined, uh, there they say that uh, due to the knowledge graph, uh, the traffic uh, to Wikipedia went down. Uh, Sarah Rinches, uh, a director at uh, Wikipedia in the Netherlands, denied that during a Dutch radio show. Well, um, I don't know what to make of this. Is If uh, the knowledge graph did or didn't uh, reduce the traffic to Wikipedia, or in general to other sites? I don't know. No me either. Well, but Wikipedia does get funding from Google and Googlers, so maybe there is a little bit of a funding dilemma there. Mm -hmm. You still with us, Mr. Taki? Do you have a comment on this? Not really. We just don't know about Wikipedia figures, so, you know, I would, I think if the, if someone from Wikipedia has denied it, then I'm inclined to trust the person. I don't think people actually, come out. Actually, we, we do know the uh, numbers from Wikipedia. Uh, they are public. Uh, okay. In the article, uh, you find a link uh, to those numbers. Um, well, well, during the radio shows, he denied it and said that the traffic from Google is around 45% uh, and didn't drop. Well, the total uh, visits went down, and they also uh, um, raised the campaign or did a campaign to get more uh, editors on uh, Wikipedia, because uh, mainly women editors, uh, because they fear otherwise Wikipedia may not be as good in the future. So I know there are some mixed signals there with Wikipedia. And I've never tried to be a Wikipedia editor. Oh, well, actually, look, I have actually once. Uh, what happened was uh, I noticed uh, I had a, a, a bad link uh, like a, a, a link coming to our site, which was um, 404 ing and, and uh, the, the source of it w was Wikipedia. So I, I jumped on um, um, Wikipedia and, and amended the link, and I had all these people descend on me and abuse me. Like, you know, how they have the, the edits, and, and, and you know, um, you know, people said, this is a commercial link. I mean, for God's sake, it was a link to a um, a, a directory site that we run uh, really as a public service. Um, there's no commercial value in it. And, and all I was doing was fixing it, and, and, and they jumped on me. And that was my last experience. Um, I thought if, 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 you know, I get that sort of treatment doing the right thing, uh, no point going to do the wrong thing. Anybody else uh, have, have that sort of, um, I mean, Tim, you're a God-level uh, uh, expert ninja guru. Um, do you do um, uh, in, any um, Wikipedia edits? I have made a few, yes, Jim. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> I have made a few, and uh, they have been unchallenged so far. Look, um, I, mu I must admit, you know, depends who the editors are. Some of them are pretty crap uh, because 
you know, if you've made a very valid uh, edit or entry into something, um, these some some of them are just so overprotective that um, no matter what you do, um, it, it it just gets removed. Um, yeah, you know, so I, I do think. Yeah, I do think sometimes um, they get so overprotective or overzealous that uh, they just remove for the sheer sake of it. Um, but, and other times I haven't had problems where you've had a new entry, a new, you know, something that's very valid go on on, on site, and um, and they exit um, for you know for for what it was. Uh, I do think it's very hit and miss sometimes. Right. I suppose you're also a Demos editor. No, no, Jim. Um, no, they Edwin? never accepted me. <laughs> Edwin, are you a Demos editor? No, no, no. Otherwise, I wouldn't uh, make much more money here. Yeah. <laughs> Some oh, I can, ask money, no? I can, yeah, strangle, yeah, I can strangle Elliot. Um, he, uh, w while he was still at uni, uh, uh, I suggested to him that he become a DMOZ editor. They accepted him straight away, um, but with his uni um, email address. And then, then he let it lapse. Um, and I couldn't convince him to... Um, um, you know, try again. I could strangle him. Anyway, and I don't think it is that important, uh, like it used to be, the demos. I think it is. Um, I think it's I mean, still important, but not not that important anymore. Or am I wrong? Well, the, th the thing that makes me certain is that Matt Cutts says it isn't important. So uh, no, I'm absolutely certain that it is now. Thanks, Matt. Point taken. <laughs> okay. Um, well, let's let's move on from um, Mr. A. J. Cohn's uh, excellent article, oh, unless you'd like to speak more about it, um, Edwin. Uh, it wasn't A. J. Cohn, was it? it was somebody else? No. No, he commented on the article, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, he just, it was AJ that did the share. Yeah, Glenn Gabe uh, wrote the article. Right. Uh, um, the impact uh, of Google uh, cards on Google Glass search results. Okay. I have to apologize. I haven't done my homework this week. I've just had a prick of a week, um, flat out all the time. Um, but... Uh, if, if, if you happen to be watching this uh, hangout at a later time, you'll find the link uh, on the Dumb SEO Questions community on Google+. Plus. Uh, sorry, the News SEO News community on Google+. Plus. You'll also find it uh, on the dumbseoquestions.com. Um, look for um, this week's hangout, which is 78. Um, and um, each uh, item that we discuss is listed on an individual page, summarised at the front. Um, Hemant uh, Gupta um, lodged this one. Um, I'm not sure if anybody read it. I almost removed it from the community because I thought it might be a, a little, um, a little bit like self-promotion. Um, I'm, I, I didn't bother to check, but I'm guessing that Hemant Gupta uh, um, was the author of the article on Search Engine Journal, um, which was titled, Matt Cutts Answers, um, When Will Google Stop Updating Its Search Results? When hell freezes over, I guess. Um, well, actually, it was, um, the author was uh, Matt Sutter, but um, she's affiliated, I think, with, or... You or she or the page? What is it? It would uh, search engine journal. No, I don't know. No, me neither. But yeah, I front. Uh, yeah, I almost removed that post myself. That too. 
The other thing um, is, um, I don't know why people post things on, on April the 1st, because whenever I see April the 1st, uh, I think, um, I think um, it might be an April Fool's joke. So um, we have no comments on this one. All right. Um, another one by um, Mr. Edwin Yonk again. Um, oh, have we not just discussed this, um, or is this a different article? Um, yes, yes, we have. Yes, we have discussed it. Yeah, we have. Um, unless you want to comment uh, on it, uh, Jim. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know enough to, to add anything useful. Um, all right, let's um, move on to um, Micah's. Um, um, Micah um, posted a, um, a, a, an article in our news community uh, um, on an article uh, published by Doc Sheldon uh, with the title of Are These Anti-Google Refrains True? Inter I'd be interested to know what you guys uh, um, took away from Doc's article. To me, it seemed like um, this was a nice example of Google uh, apologia and um, I mean, a, a perfectly natural and human response um, um, by anyone uh, Who's had a um, site-wide penalty uh, removed from Google? Um, the history of it is that um, his entire site um, was penalised for a single article, and um, um, Matt Cutts confirmed it was for a single article via a tweet, who said that the um, um, the web spam team's uh, ruling was on point, or something like that. And uh, I don't know how, point, how on point it was because uh, five days later the, the uh, site white penalty was removed and then this article appears from Doc. Um, did anybody else see it that way or, or am I completely out of order? Yeah, I saw it as a payment uh, uh, to Google mm -hmm. for removing uh, the penalty. Uh, yeah. There, no, there are. I, uh, to be honest, I did start a comment like uh, point, uh, making quotes and then say what what wasn't wrong. But when I went to uh, his uh, third uh, anti Google complaint, I I guess um, I was fed up with it and I just said it's, it is a payment because uh, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's what I thought anyway. I mean, I don't blame him for, for writing it. Um, that's how you feel, um, um, or how you would feel um, w having a, a site-wide penalty uh, um, removed. Oh, no, no, I, I don't um, uh, disregard that, that he did that, but um, I would probably do the same, but uh, it is still a payment, uh, or somewhat of a payment, to write uh, something like this, right? Uh, uh, Rep Genius did it. Um, some other well-known penalties did it. So, to me, it's, it's it is a payment, uh, and not really something serious one should read. Hmm. And and just to clarify, yeah, by payment you mean it's more like a quid pro quo. Uh, um, uh, a thank you note um, for um, getting back on on the money train. Yes, yes, that's what I mean, indeed. Yeah. Mm. Tim Cap is having wonderful fun uh, in our chat tonight. Uh, he's um, it's like he's he's found the keys to the Bank of England. I, I, I wouldn't say the keys to the Bank of England, Jim, but you know when there's something to be exploited, um, it's great fun figuring it out. 
I, I, you probably missed my um, re request in the um, um, column there, but um, when, when you beat Mark, um, let me know, and I'll, I'll let him. I'll, I'll, I'll tell him. Oh, that's Jesus! That's like about twenty-four million away. <laughs> <laughs> but um, if this proves to be uh, fruitful, um, Massa and I will be hitting the high streets near you <laughs> later <laughs> today. I, I, I can't wait to tell him. He'll be apoplectic, if that's the word <laughs> I'm trying to get. Yeah, he'll have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, it's all fun and games. Um, all right. Um, the um, Doc Sheldon article is is uh, spoken of and and and. Uh, uh, dispense with. Um, all right. Um, next one we can probably skip to. It's on the uh, new view counter. Uh, um, I don't want to show this on my profile. Um, nobody else wanted to talk any more about the view count, did they? All right, we have um, one here, another one pass posted by you, Mr. Yonk, and thank you for the effort that you put into um, uh, keeping our SEO news community populated with the current uh, things that are happening uh, around the web. Um, this was one that says, during last month I read uh, articles dismissing Facebook as a good way to promote or start your business. Um, this article sums it up by comparing it to Google+. The main issue with Facebook pages uh, is, um, in fact, um, all of your updates uh, will only be shown to about 1% of your potential audience. And uh, he is referring to an article by Jenny Halez. I just noticed Jenny Halez hasn't been to, um, to join us and, and she promised that she would. Anyway, she created an article, here's what I've been thinking about, um, why uh, big brands that will lead the charge to Google+. Plus. Um, well, I, I think that's past tense now, isn't it? Uh, aren't all the big brands uh, already on Google+, Plus? or am I wrong? Godiva of Chocolates uh, are on Google+, Plus, aren't they? <laughs> Uh, yes, they are. That's one of the, the big brands in, in your uh, portfolio, Tim? Yep, it is. Mm -hmm. And they're, uh, yeah, I mean, Google Plus engagement is not, not that brilliant at the minute, uh, but it's, it's picking up slowly but surely, it's picking up. Okay. What what do you see as you you, you mean that people aren't um, interacting with um, no 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 it's it's it, it, it's more of a brand affinity thing at the minute um, uh, if people know the brand that they know that they do chocolates but if if you had to speak to someone and say uh, you know what's a luxury brand of chocolates there's four or five others that they would pick instantly and never uh, and and not realize you know these guys do chocolates um so it, it it is i mean although they're a worldwide massive brand they've concentrated themselves in the far east um for quite some time and it's just it, it's now about it's it's really a, a a brand thing rather and it'll build up over time um it's just one of those natural progressions, really. So, um, no, the the, the in, interaction and engagement hasn't quite started yet um, in, in the UK. Right. But they're, they're an absolutely huge brand, um, uh, say, in Hong Kong. They're, they're into um, ice cream, um, flavoured drinks. Massive. Uh, I mean... Any, anything with look, chocolate uh, in it, uh, they're in it. Everything's tailored to that market. Uh, even now, um, 
all all their uh, boxes, the imagery, uh, the packaging, the new designs is all designed and tailored to that market to appeal to that market um, because that's that's where the sales are. So um, you know, bringing it into the into the UK, they have been here a while. It's just about building up that brand. Um, and they're in all the right places uh, in the UK, but it's now trying to take it out there to the larger market where if somebody was searching for a luxury product, a luxury chocolate for a specific, you know, whether it be an anniversary or Mother's Day or whatever the case may be, they don't, they don't see they don't they, they, they don't equate it so they don't tend to click on it in in the SERPs or even in the AdWords because they haven't it, it hasn't been in their mind yet so there's a lot of brand affinity still to be done online and offline for the UK market um, but you know it's getting there slowly but surely hmm. I love those hangouts. Um, every week I learn something new, and it, it really is great to, to you know to hear um, what's happening with, with with something like that um, because it's, it's it's outside my you know realm. I, I I just don't have a chance to come in contact with stuff like that. Yeah, you, you know, and uh, yeah, I mean it, it's it's really interesting, and and you know you get you get people. Um, you know, if you're doing PPC and they approach you and they go, well, you know, I'm doing PPC and my ads are always positioned either one or number two. Why am I not getting the clicks or why am I not getting, you know, conversion through to it? And a lot of the time, it's actual brand. Just because you appear in the SERPs, just because your ad might be appearing number one or number two, does not mean you're going to make money. You still need to work on your brand the brand within the pages and connect with the actual person that lands on your site. Um, if you don't make that connection and that brand affinity, um, you know, so there's a, a hang, of, hang of a lot of, you know, everything else to be done over just being number one or number two or number three because even if they click, if you don't have that affinity, it's not going to happen. You know, ultimately, yeah, you know, I mean, ultimately, you can always look at it like, um, okay, um, I'll base my model on for every 2,000 visits I get, I'll make one sale. But ultimately, if you don't work on your brand, it will forever sit like that. You need to work on that brand and that brand affinity um, so that, you know, ultimately, if somebody says ketchup, they think, you know, if somebody mentions ketchup, you immediately go Heinz. Um, it's about building that affinity together. So whether it be ads, offline, online, telly, magazines, you know, it's everything translates ultimately to what you're going to achieve online. It's yeah, you know, it's a whole big complex mix of of marketing nowadays. Um, the good old days of when there was like 10 websites out there and if you were number one you got the clicks and you got the sales is it's long gone <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah I wonder if Godiva would send us some chocolates You know what, mate? I still haven't got any out of them. <laughs> I've had to buy my own. Well, except when there's launches and stuff. Hey, where do they manufacture? Do they manufacture in the UK at all? No, it's all it's all Belgium. Right. Otherwise, it can be called Belgian chocolate. Yeah, uh -huh. it's all Belgium. Uh, it's really easy, obviously especially for the UK in terms of um, online sales because they've just got to put a two-day lead time on it. So it's not going to be next day delivery. There's always a two-day, but it's fresh straight from Belgium. It comes in, and I'll tell you what, they do go over the top on their packaging. 
um, you know, it comes in a little polystyrene and then it's on an inner polystyrene and, you know, they're very, very protective of temperature and all sorts. And, yeah, I mean, it's amazing to see. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's, you know, they could save a bit of a, a few bob on the shipping if they just chucked it in the in the post like Thornton's, but... <laughs> or Cadbury's or whatever, but yeah, it's all part of the experience, unwrapping five boxes to get to your chocolate. Mm -hmm. Have you guys been to Bruges? No, we are planning that uh, in a couple of months' time. Uh, we're going to nip on over. Yeah, very special place. Yeah, yeah, no, it's lovely. I mean, half of half of you know the east coast suffolk is all is all you know half of that brick um used in all the buildings originally came from bruges before the english worked out how to actually um you know bake a bake a brick so and it's amazing to think that 3 400 500 years ago they were shipping over in small little sailing boats half of the brick that built suffolk it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing what people achieved even then. All right. Um, oh, the, the other question I had, uh, well, I, I didn't ask before, um, is is the uh, Godiva brand campaign uh, doing any uh, anything on Facebook? Yeah, they're doing it on all the major channels. Okay. What does the Facebook, I mean, what's involved in the Facebook account? Facebook, there's a lot more engagement. Um, why there's any difference? Because pretty much there's the same stuff cross-posted. Um, why Facebook seems to be taking off um, a lot more and faster uh, I'm not entirely sure because for me personally, uh, the only place that I actually get any true engagement and actual interaction and something that's going on that stimulates my brain um, is Google Plus. So, yeah, you know, go figure, go figure. There's there's a different market for for all things, and uh, at the minute it seems to be Facebook and Twitter. Mind you, okay. you know, I can, I can understand the Twitter thing because when they had the the, the, the product that uh, that uh, competition that launch, um, it was very very cool. What they actually did was they had this um, large screen uh, on the wall, and if people tweeted with like the hashtag Godiva, then their live tweet appeared live on the screen. And of course, you know, there was two, three hundred people there who were all keen on having their own little tweet appear live on the on the on the big screen. Um, and that just got things going like crazy. And of course all their friends saw it and you know, it, it really got that going big time. So that was that was quite ingenious. Um, so yeah, I mean I can see why those have taken off much faster than Google Plus. I was at a Microsoft partner conference um, year before last um, when um, they had a, a big screen either side in an auditorium. They had, were a screen either side actually, but uh, they were both showing the same thing. They, they were showing tweets um, coming down uh, from from people at, at, at the conference. And um, anyway, appearing on the screen, the whole uh, auditorium cracked up because um, a, a tweet came through. The guy next to me farted. <laughs> anyway. Um, all right. So that is that covered, I, I, I guess, which means that we're done for this week. Was there anything else um, we should be talking about? No.
Nothing? No, not really. Um, just to remind everyone that if uh, they're a small business or a business in the Midlands, um, in the UK, uh, feel free to drop me a line and, uh, you know, we can help save you. All right. Um, that's right. Uh, you're opening your um, new agency? Yeah, end of April. Um, in fact, you know, I'm available to talk to anyone now, but at the end of April, beginning of um, May, um, I'll be uh, available to, to all businesses uh, anywhere in the UK, but uh, especially in the Midlands, where I can provide you with a hands-on personal service. So that's interesting. What does um, an SEO charge? Well, what it, is an it, SEO charge, and what do you get for your money? Well, firstly, it's you know a lot of times here, yeah, Jim, where you get two different things. Um, you know, there's an ideal budget where, in your mind, based on what work needs potentially doing to that site, um, is very, very different to what small businesses can actually budget, you know, afford. So where you know agencies. Um, have like maybe three or four packages, for example. I mean, Dan mentioned the other the other uh, couple of weeks back when he started out, he did a, a 300, a 500, a 900 a month package. And now they offer a 1,000, 3,000, and 5,000 a month package. Um, yes, we, we, we can offer these, obviously. Um, uh, but what I feel is that when you potentially offer a budget, you tend to limit yourself because um, or small businesses, especially in this economy, which is still quite tough, just simply can't actually afford these. So, you know, we always sit down and say, well, what do you want to achieve? And then this is my ideal be based on the amount of hours um, I could spend on your site per month would cost X amount. Uh, then you get the turnaround going, well, cheapest. I really can't afford that. And all I can afford uh, budgetary wise, um, you know, starting out is let's say 300 a month. Um, then you need to revise and say, right, okay, based on that, let's look at this. These will be my priorities. Let's work our way through it that way based on your budget. Um, obviously, you decide on KPIs. Um, naturally, naturally traffic, but obviously in the first instance, it depends on the site health. So if I've done a, a crawl on the site, and let's say we've got a site looking with 30 to 40,000 errors sitting there, um, my first two or three months KPI might just be site errors. And then we reassess the KPIs based on traffic thereafter. Uh, and then conversions. Uh, you, you see what I mean? I, I tend not to look at rankings, but people love to look at rankings. Um, but, you know, you've got to prioritize things based on a person's budget, what they can specifically afford, and then and then move it forward logically. And communication, you know, you need to communicate. Um, I, th I think why I've retained some really long-term clients is because they can drop me an email pretty much at any time. Um, and, and, and we can sort it out and, and, and chat it through where a lot of SEOs go, well, listen, you know, if you phone me, you're going to be paying for that call. <laughs> um, mm. Yes, in a way you are, but, you know, you still, you still, you still got to create a relationship. The, the better I understand you, the better I understand your motives and your business, the better I can help you, you yeah. know, achieve those. I, I noticed you during a hangout tonight. Um, you've taken a couple of emails and, and phone calls um, from clients calling in. What does the average client call you to ask? Well, um, I mean, today I had um, two emails. Pretty much, you know, it, it really does vary. Um, I'll get things like, hey, Tim, have you seen that this guy's jumped up one position? And it's like, okay, calm down. Let's have a look at why. You do a little bit of digging and say, hey, you know, he's just he's just done um, an interview in 
um, you know, in the newspaper. Uh, and he's got these citations flowing through, which has bumped him up. Um, so if you can explain, or at least explain the best you can, you know, people understand it. And in also another way, that's great, because then that spurs them on, because you've been saying to them for a couple of months, hey, listen, we need to get some offline marketing going here. Um, and then it spurs, the, spurs them on. Um, but I've also had a couple of issues today with, oh, you know, I've just been trying to load these images up on my site. I just don't know. To, even though I'm not a web designer, um, they still they still you know a client and if I can help I will help um, so yeah you know just sorting out an image things like that and I've also had another one today who's working on um, some content for his site and I've just had to um, stop what I'm doing to go in look at it say yeah great let me just tweak that. Let me just uh, get a little link in there. Let's optimize that. Let's drop an H2 tag in there. And right, you're great to publish. Let's go for it. So, yeah. Excellent. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, Do your clients ask you for any warranties? Uh, do, do they say, um, you know, you've got um, a week to be on position one, or I want to be on the first page of Google number one? Uh, yes, they do ask me that. All of them ask me that. How long is it going to take? How do you kind of, I just, there's no way I can give any guarantee whatsoever. Um, you know, if Google, if Google changes. Uh, changes the algo, you know, it makes an update 150 times a year, how possibly, uh, and if they make any two or three major updates in a year, do we really know what's going to happen? Do we know how? Um, no, uh, offer no guarantees uh, <laughs> whatsoever. Um, you know, all I do say to them is, look, you need to give something at least a minimum of a six-month run um, before you can really start seeing any form of, uh, obviously I would like to have things increasing because ideally as you work your way through, you're fixing errors and you're working on the site from day one. But um, I always say to them, look, at least give it six months, um, you know, d before you make a yes or no decision on there. And I always have it uh, initially on the start, I always have a six month um, period. Um, because ideally, you know, if you think about, uh, you know, you try and equate it to, to on, uh, offline, one decent magazine published article or even advert is going to set you back 250 quid, which will only last in a magazine for one publication. Um, so pretty much if, if you consider what that will do for you compared to someone actually, you know, spending time building up uh, online relevance, you, you know, you, you, you can kind of start equating that um, in terms of one crappy little ad, which may or may not get anyone picking up the phone, depending on where that distributes to, to or does the magazine just sit in a doctor's office for the next 20 years. Uh, you know, you've got to equate these things. Um, it does take time. Uh, certainly does. I always say you're not really going to see much happening for the first six months. Ideally, we, we do want to think, but you're not going to see anything drastic going on. Um, depends what industry you're in. You know, sometimes we can we can just hit a winner straight straight off the bat, um, and it all depends what what you've done in the past that is going to hinder you or benefit you. Uh, you know, unfortunately. I would say 20% of clients that pick up the phone to me have been uh, have been penalised. Mm -hmm. is, is your mix um, a mix? Well, is your um, service, I should say, a mix of PPC and um, uh, SEO uh, yeah. and on-site yeah. or, yeah. or off-site? So, yeah. You know, what, what, I mean, I'm always looking for offsite opportunities. Um, so it all depends on the market space they're in. Um, if they're manufacturing and they've just produced something, um, like I said, I don't press releases online. Press releases go, 
you know, get hand delivered. They are handwritten. Uh, well, you know, it's it's all done beautifully, and it's sent off to to industry experts offline. Um, because the way I find out is that anything's happening, I get if I sent out ten, I'll get five of them that'll actually rewrite the copy and uh, do a bit of research and work into it, and I get five beautifully, completely different, unique. Uh, articles coming back. Um, AdWords, yes, um, definitely we do a mix there. Uh, ideally, the way you want to work it is we, we set a budget. So whilst we're fixing the site, they start to get traffic coming in. Whilst we're fixing it and working on the site, they're getting traffic coming in. But the way I like to work it is after, let's say, once we're once we're pretty comfortable with the site and we're starting to see some results, then I want to try and scale down my AdWords to meet the increase of the, do you see what I mean? So as, as, we're, as we're gaining organically, I'm trying to reduce the AdWords spend uh, because there's certainly a lot more that they can do with uh, even even offline with the PR company. Uh, and it all depends on the industry, obviously. But yeah, I mean, we, 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 we tend to do a nice, uh, a good mix. With PPC advertising, did you do that as a, a, a on cost on the Google ad spend or uh, with an hourly rate? And, and no, no, with, ad, like uh, with AdWords, obviously, you know, I've got a management centre. Um, I, I don't, obviously, for a small person, I don't have the cash flow to actually uh, to actually manage, um, you know, to, to deal with, with any budget. So the um, I'll set it all up. They will. It will be in their account. They will pay for it. Um, I'll manage it, and they, I charge a management fee um, of six percent of the cost. Right. I'm sorry. I, I missed that. How much of the cost? Six percent, which is like I mean, the industry average is ten, um, but this can vary depending on the size of it. And I'm just talking about a, a normal sort of little campaign. Um, for a management fee. If I'm talking a massive brand campaign, um, I'm looking at anywhere between 10 and 15% of the spend. Yeah. I actually had a call within, today. Yeah, sorry, go within ahead. Your, within your uh, uh, KPIs, uh, do you use uh, AdWords like uh, the quality score or um, do you uh, mix uh, SEO and uh, paid search? Actually, within my KPIs, I don't include my AdWords as such, um, and I haven't thought of that really. Uh, no, um, my KPIs tend to be uh, traffic, uh, tend to be traffic and conversions. Is um, um, oh, sorry. Uh, have any of your clients uh, ever been um, hit by or diagnosed with uh, a hit from negative SEO? And if so, um, how did you handle it? Yeah, I had uh, one of the hotel chains. Um, uh, one of our hotel chains uh, did seriously uh, get affected by a negative SEO campaign. Um, we compiled a full list, obviously they were all disavowed, and um, we sent that list together with um, a um, notification to, to in Webmaster Tools to say what was going on, why we had added these to the disavow tool, um, and you know, that we were notifying you. Um, it lasted for about three months. And we were pulling in anywhere from the first first time we noticed it in Webmaster Tools, we noticed an increase of almost fifteen thousand, uh, you know, links. Uh, the following month, it shot up to another twenty odd, and the following month, um, uh, it went down to about another nine thousand, and then it stopped. So. Um, yeah, I, I, it did. so it went for three months. It was quite intense, but we, we, we listed them all, disavowed them all, and when we first noticed it, we did notify uh, the web spam team uh, of what was going on, 
uh, whether they even read it, I don't know, because we never got a confirmation back whatsoever, but it was added to the disavow tool. Um, the site never, uh, in, in soaps or anything, uh, never was never affected that way. So whether the site was strong enough to withstand it, whether it was the disavow tool that you no know, followed it, I couldn't tell you because, you know, uh, I, I, I don't know. But yeah, we were on top of it, and I think I think in the long term, if we hadn't have watched the site and found those, I think the following because uh, I think this was around about the July, I would I would suspect with that amount of links over the three months in total, I think by the um, November penguin that that that, that came along. I think the, the site potentially would have been hit because there was, I mean, there was a substantial amount of links coming in. Um, but because we found it and disavowed them almost two months prior to, to, to the next penguin, I think, you know, that did the job. But yeah, you've got to be ever vigilant, especially with your with big brands. I haven't seen any attempts on any of my smaller clients whatsoever. It's uh, just been bigger brands. Yeah. Okay. Do you ever encounter resentment from the developers of, of the, the websites that you're looking after, R you know, rather than the owners of the sites, the, the people that actually do the development? Do you ever encounter that, and how do you deal with it? Yeah. Um, funny enough, it tends to, tends to be the bigger agencies. Uh, the smaller sites and the developers, you know, we've built a rapport over time. And in fact, um, you know, we actually collaborate on other projects all the time now. Um, I have developers phoning phoning me up saying, oh, listen, you know, I'm working on this other site and I've got this problem and how would I implement that not to blah, blah, blah. So, you know, we build up really good working relationships. It only tends to be the bigger brands who have employed the bigger develop development agencies that are the ones that have the serious attitude problem. Um, because they probably earn in, you know, ridiculous amounts, charging ridiculous amounts, and when you come along and say to them, "Listen, guys, this is just really substandard," <laughs> you, yeah, you, um, but you just got to keep chipping away. You, you know, the way the way I resort to that now is um, every 15 days I do a site check, I uh, report it, and I send it to direct to the developers, but I CC the the um, the brand manager or whoever I'm dealing with it within the particular brand. I CC them them in, and eventually, after two or three, the uh, the client will actually turn around to the developers and say, "Listen, you know what the hell's going on here, and you've got to sort this out." And begrudgingly, they they <laughs> you know they get on board. Um, but yeah, it tends to be the bigger brands, the overpaid developers who are screwing the client blind who do the substandard job. What's the worst uh, CMS platform you've encountered? <sighs> Demandware. That's certainly the worst one I've come across. Actually, you, you broke up just you said, was it Demand, was it? Demandware. Demandware is the worst one I've come across. Um, What's the best? You know, I used to hate Magento. Uh, I really used to hate Magento, but as you get into it, um, I've actually found it to be a very, very competent uh, e-commerce platform. Um, uh, yeah, so I've actually, I actually. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like Magento. WordPress for an actual site, I think that's fantastic because that has um, longevity for a small business, whereas once you've got them on their feet um, and you part ways, you know, you've got the site into shape, you've got it where it's going, they understand what they need to do on a monthly basis. Um, it's, 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 it's easy for them to manage and it provides longevity for them because they can always build onto that platform and add to that platform as their business grows, as products grow. Um, 
so yes, uh, uh, you know, WordPress is a is a no brainer really. Small business owners get uh, say, let me just put a number on say twenty uh, uh, spammy emails a day, uh, promising page one results on Google, and maybe one phone call from um, if it's not actually a partner of Google, they're, they're, they're Larry uh, Page's brother. Um, how do you counter that, and, and, and how do you um, de develop new business in that environment? Yeah, it's a tough one. Um, you know, my clients have actually all been very good this year. Uh, last year, I did have a lot of them forwarding me the emails, going, "Hey, look at this. What do you think?" Um, and initially, I started out actually breaking down why all these things were completely wrong. Uh, eventually, I just said to them, "Guys, look, if you're using me, you've got to trust me." Um, uh, you know, after our after our initial six month period. Uh, you can you can stop using me within thirty with thirty days notice. Feel free to go for it because you know the longer I sit there breaking down your site, defending what I'm doing in the game versus what you know the twenty dollar a month um, you know spam email is going to do is look you know you we're just wasting time. Um, but actually this year. Um, I haven't had a single email like that from any of my clients. So either the spammers are getting very slack, or they've um, <laughs> they're just ignoring them now. Do you ever wake up in the morning and say, "What the hell am I doing in this business?" Every day, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, just going back to uh, uh, the CMS question. Uh, and do you also use uh, frameworks like uh, a Django or LiftWap? I I personally not no I haven't I I haven't as, as such come across that. Okay. Going you've derailed my train of thought there, um, Edwin. Yeah, you're yeah. you're sorry, sorry. to come up with the next question now. <laughs> you were into oh. spammers, man. <laughs> well, yeah, the Django is uh, uh, pretty popular these days. No? So. Yeah, yeah, but I haven't come across uh, the need, you know, at the minute. So you never Do know. You, it um, could be. You go. You never know. You know, each client, each client brings. You know, anyone that, that phones up. Everyone brings a different set of circumstances with them. Um, different businesses look, you know, occasionally you know, you'll get a client to come along and you really want to work with. Um, but honestly, you can say to them, listen, I have no understanding on how the hell your business works. Um, and, and unfortunately, I don't think I could do you justice. You know, so in that case, um, I can help you with your PPC. I can help you obviously sort out the health of your site. But in terms of um, actually marketing it, marketing it, getting it out there, I have no idea what your market entails. And I, and and from a you know from looking at it, and and I've always been honest. You know, if I can sort out the health of your site. I can help you with PPC. Um, I mean, it's not very often, uh, but I have had the odd occasion where I've looked at a business strategy and said, "I really don't know how, as a business, I can once I've sorted out your site, take that forward for you because um, the the content is way too complex, and I think there's only a few copywriters out there that could actually even tackle something like that, and I think that." Their results uh, and their costs would just be, you know, crippling. So either we'll sort this out, help. I will give you a content kind of strategy, but you, as a small business, is going to need to create that because you're so niche. And what I was, this was a research and development, for example, and I couldn't have sourced the content. It would have just been astronomical. Um, and only particularly them, because the market was so specifically niche, could they? So you know, you've just you know, plainly honest and 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 and, and no bullshit. Um, we'll do some PPC. We'll sort out the the structure of your site. 
but when it comes to actually producing any content, I can help you market that content and I can help you push it out there, but you are going to need to produce this. There's just no way in hell that I can find anyone within any kind of cost base that will help you uh, create this. So yeah, you know, each each client brings a different set of strategies um, and and ideas that you need to come up with, and we throw them around all the time here. You know, do you pay any attention to Bing, Yandex, Baidu, um, uh, Yahoo? I use the um, I use the Webmaster tools, um, and I register obviously for all the Webmaster tools. Um, just as you know, informational, but um, and you will you will tend to see how um, creating things and working with things through the normal structure of things that they tend to 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 reflect in all the other sites. Um, it's just a natural progression. Does your mother ever ask you that uh, whether you should go out and get a job? <laughs> <laughs> I think my wife always asks me to go out and get a job because you know, if you start trying to tell people what you do, they just they glaze over. You know, if you even if a client comes to you and like they they tweak on a particular subject that you've just you know really excited about and you're trying to discuss something and even the client thinks, oh Jesus, I wish I hadn't asked that. <laughs> What's what's been your most outstanding success that you're allowed to talk about? Uh, well, I think I did mention it a couple months back. Um, I just hit the nail on the head with a piece of content uh, for a client, and um, they were ab new, small scale business, averaging uh, between 100 and 150 visits a day. Um, we took that up to twenty eight thousand. You know, uh, just it was just the most sweetest piece of content out there, which people picked up on. Um, you know, the 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 amount of links coming back uh, were, were phenomenal. Majority from 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 image, social sharing, and things like this. But um, it was just the sweetest thing. Traffic did level out again, but now our daily traffic sits around about 500 a day mark. So it was just finding that sweet spot, building that little bit more links, those little bit more natural links have, have really helped it in, in increase in certain particular areas for the, with, with luxury into it. And it's just really, you know, so hitting the sweetest nail on the head, um, you know, 100%. 200% traffic increase um, and steady. So you just got to look for the next sweet one. Okay. Um, I've got another question. It's just gone from my head at the moment. Um, no, it's gone. Damn it. Sorry, mate. That's all right, Jim. That's all right, mate. I feel like I've, I've just been waterboarded, mate. <laughs> <laughs> It was a bit of fun. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. There's so many people work in so many different ways. It's and, and that's what I love about these hangouts. Everybody jumping in, jumping out. Um, you know, the, the the community itself. You get so many different ideas and point of views from people. It's it's phenomenal. Um, and you read comments and you think, ah, oh, you know, I never thought of that. How can I tr take that, translate it into to what I'm doing because I think this client would really benefit from something like that. Uh, it, it, it never stops, really, the ideas and, and the flow. It's actually, if you think about it, I mean, Google Plus, what? We're talking three, four years old now? I can't. 2011, uh, uh, June, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's phenomenal. And you kind of think back and like, well, how did I, how did I operate beforehand? <laughs> mm. um, yeah, it's 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 a massive flow of information, and uh, um, it's yeah, it's really interesting. As soon as I joined Google Plus, the very same day, I sent an email 
a, a form letter email to every one of our clients um, saying they just had to join, set up their details. Um, um, I said this this is the way, it's, the way that I must dig that email out because uh, I reckon I was sort of you know a bit prophetic in it. But um, anyway, uh, I sent that email out to about 200 odd, 220 odd people. And I think about three of them have joined Google Plus. And you know, no, I, no. I, I said to them, "Your life depends on this. Um, you've just got to do it." But um, about three of them have joined. I think. I yeah. think one of them's left as well. <laughs> Same experience. I mean, I think I must have sent out fifty. Um, I even sent, uh, created a little PDF thing, <laughs> where to log into, how to do it, what to click. You know, did the whole little PDF, sent it out to about 50 odd. I think we've got three or four. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Anyone I take on now, the first job is create your, you know, Google Plus, create your personal profile. We're attaching your business onto that, whether you want to do it depending on what they are, whether they're a business brand organization, has to be done. Rail publisher, um, local listing to the address. You know, these these are just like the first things now, absolutely the first thing, um, and it's and it's right. You know, I want five minutes a day out of you, um, because that's the thing with small businesses: finding the time. You know, all of a sudden you're talking to them about content and Google Plus, and you know they're thinking, Jesus Christ, where's where where am I going to get this time? Um, and you know, literally all I want out of you is five minutes out of your day. So you could be eating your sandwich and looking at your um, Google Plus business page. Minimum five minutes a day, that's what I want out of you. And what you'd find is the, the, first, the first two months is pretty much excruciating. You need to push them, remind them. You need to say, hey, listen, I, didn't, I logged into the account today. And I didn't see you hadn't plus one to anyone. You haven't, you haven't commented on anyone's post. You haven't posted anything today um, and the first two months is like pulling teeth but when they start getting that little bit of engagement coming through and they and and and, and they realize Jesus there's actually people out there that want to know things and then you start chatting and then they start chatting and then I mean most clients after those first two months is like pulling teeth but then once they get into it they get that first bit of engagement off they go off they go and uh, you know Great stuff, and you see them spending more and more time on it, and yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted to ask before that had gone from my mind. Uh, you did the offline uh, exercise with Godiva chocolates um, with a big launch. Uh, tell us about that. Uh, yeah, that was that was really good. I mean, obviously. Um, they have a PR company, which which is fantastic if you can afford it. It's brilliant because uh, you know we work. I work with a um, uh, with a PR company, so basically anything that's going on offline can be optimized. So whether they're sending out um, releases, whether they're sending out images, whether they're sending out um, PDFs, uh, requests for information, everything has the potential to uh, to be optimized. And they are really great at that. The the um, the actual uh, launch itself uh, combined sort of you know online and offline media, which um, you know has has has, you know, has just been has, has just been brilliant. Um, the amount of um, social media engagement from the event because you know it was really well integrated with it has been great. The, um, the links, let alone from the social media, has done well. Um, the press itself, um, because they were at the event and it was, you know, it was a good session, a good few hours, and there was different things going on. The images coming out of there uh, from 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 different press, um, both online and offline, um, really great. And you know, traffic, we've we've you know, 100% increased this month. Um, and we've got a few more things. Obviously, Easter coming up, and we've got a we've got a lot of online, in store, and online activities planned for um, Easter. 
uh, so we you know everything needs to work hand in hand and it, it, it's just this is the first time honestly actually that these uh, I've worked really well with a PR company I mean these guys are great um, if they if they have an idea if they have a question they're always emailing me um, they'll send it across to me I'll have a tweak and I say hey <laughs> you know just little things like where's the URL <laughs> <laughs> we need the site in there. We need a URL in there. Come on, um, but the guys are brilliant, and if they just really taken taken to it, um, taken it on board, and um, yeah, it, it's just it's just working perfectly at the minute. So I don't want to rock the boat. <laughs> you ever wish um, that you were running your own website uh, rather than making other people successful? You know what, Jim? The, the funniest thing is, is um, we we all have our little play websites, don't we? Um, and and every month you go, ah, you know what? I need to I need to sort that out. I need to sort it out. And then every month someone else phones you. You've got another two site reviews to do for potential clients. You have another client that has a meltdown. Um, who deletes half his pages? <laughs> um, you get another client that accidentally 404s everything, and your own site never gets sorted. It's like a builder, mate. Their house, their own home, is never finished. And and you know, every month I say to myself, I've got three sites sitting there. I need to get sorted because they are absolute gold mines. And every month <laughs> you never get it done. Well, that, that leads me to another question. Will you ever um, update um, the page on onlineownership.com that we have displayed on uh, uh, the SEO questions community on Google Plus? Yes, that's going to be done in the next 30 days, I hope to God. <laughs> and so uh, yeah. Yeah, we just have to make this statement true because it's linked as uh, Tim Kappa's Basics for Business SEO. Oh, mate. Um, <laughs> what are you doing? You've seen that link there, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, have I? Don't know. <laughs> okay. It, it's um, it's just this. I mean, I put it there um, on, on the oh, community yes, yes. On, on Google Plus because, yeah, yeah. you know, they're, they're basic questions that are asked. And so I put in Google's SEO starter guide, the Moz SEO starter guide. And um, I thought yours should be there. But I must admit, yeah. I, I think I looked at that page in 2011 when I first saw it, and it, it seemed pretty fresh at the time, and I, I was absolutely clueless. I haven't changed much, uh, but then, then again, neither is your page. Exactly. But we're going to have to make a change now because that needs to have all, all the new business details and contact details and what we do for you on there within the next ooh, 30 days. Um, and of course, all the content that I've tried to maintain and you know updates that I've done on uh, Google Plus business pages, that site's going to come down and all that content and I'm just going to keep one site up to date now. So yeah, within the next 30 days, Jim, we should um, <laughs> we should have something going on. Okay. You go to a, a conference, um, drink heavily uh, the night before and you wake up uh, in a motel room and look over and you, your arm is under Matt Cutt's neck. Would you chew your arm off? To get away, not a chance, mate. I'd chew his jugular. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you can tell by the, by the level of that question. I've, I've run out of run, run out of things to ask. Um, yeah, listen, there is just no way in hell I would even wake up in a room. I would, you know, no, 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 no. No, that's just a, that's just a horribly scary thought, man. Do you see that image that I posted um, that I shared or something like that? How short Matt Cutts is? He is a small man. Yeah, yeah never realised, and that answers all of our questions. Hey, nothing wrong with being small. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm a, listen. I'm only five foot. Ten, so look, you know, I'm I'm below average, you know, but. You know, I don't. I, maybe my 
complex deteriorated as I hit my forties. I don't know. Um, but yeah, you know, Matt is certainly doing the short man, short man stereotype. Anyway, we we don't need to um, um, worry ourselves about that, do we? Um, no, just that he wants to bring some of my back. <laughs> Know what game he's playing at? Well, we have to put Masataki in the hot seat one day. I'd love to know what he does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh oh. At the, <laughs> at the minute he's uh, he's at the minute he's strolling down a high street on a mobile. Oh, come on, Masataki. These things haven't been updated yet, man. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. How long does it take to update a view on your profile? It usually happens once a day. I'm stuck. <laughs> All right. So basically, I had my big 50K jump, and then it just stopped. And it's just like it was just a tease. But those of you watching... Okay. Um, um, uh, Tim and Masataki are playing with um, view counts uh, on Google Plus. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, Rob Mars asks, how many views did the Hasselhoff get? Which which, which one do you mean? Oh no, which one do you mean, Rob? The one from Otto, uh, if, if uh, he also posted uh, on your... Uh... No, he never posted on mine. I asked him to, but oh, he just ignored he me. He even posted on mine, uh, even when I had nothing to do with him. Uh, but he must have made m millions of posts. Uh, it was automated. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. You're a Google Insider, Rob, um, and uh, that that's was a complaint why. that Tim had. Um, uh, yeah. 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 Damn right. That's my complaint. If you, we were told that we had to take that's him with roof. Hoff. Okay. Hoff. Was it Hofster? Hofstam. Hofstam. Oh, yeah, was it? Hofstam. Yeah, that was it. Now, you see, all the people that actually thought, oh, look, I'm going to do my little tagging. Oh, look at that. I can't believe. Why is he appearing in theirs and not mine? There's something wrong there. Oh, he's still doing it today. So, that means I still might get my little, um, yeah, I still might get it in. I think that was the second layer in the April Fool's joke, because people started wondering why they got a mail from uh, Mr. Hassel. Yeah, but I mean, you know, they're still doing it, they're still posting today, so my image that I asked him to might still get one. Did you back it well, up? Yeah. Hey? Did you back it up? Yeah, I did. Oh, well. well. Perhaps there was not enough room for him. Yeah, maybe. You never know, mate. Or he knew oh, well. about your evil plans with it. <laughs> <laughs> never evil. Oh, well. I might still get lucky. He might, he might half bomb me later. But he must have had millions of views. Millions, millions, yeah, hundred, yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I like the idea. It was cool. What are the plans for this week, guys, or at least next week, I should say? Hopefully, moving. All right. Yep. Yeah. I'm helping Hopefully. him to move. <laughs> oh, are you now? 
That's great because I need an extra tank of petrol to drive from your place to Tim's. Um, Rob. Yeah. Yeah, not too bad. I mean, that's what friends are about. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, straight across to Felix Stowe, straight up the A14, um, or maybe come through to Harwich. Harwich, yeah, straight up the A14. Boom, right here, a couple of hours. <laughs> Take, take off from Calais, wouldn't you, and go to Dover, surely? No, what do you want to go to France for? He's in, he's, he's in, he's in uh, Holland. Yeah, well, wouldn't, wouldn't you dri drive to Calais and, and take the, the, the ferry to Dover? No, 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 just hit straight Wait, east. Huh? From me, I'm, an, I'm in the Midlands, so basically sh straight east, you've either got uh, Felix Stowe, or a little bit slightly up, you've got Harwich, um, which both which both goes across straight like straight across the channel. If you go down to Calais, you're driving mm, three hours south, then you're crossing into France, then you've still got to drive all the way up north. Mm -hmm. So it just goes straight across east. Yeah, but the the. Ferry from Holland to uh, Harwich is six hours. Uh. Take the overnight one. <laughs> Sleep mm. on the boat. Sleep on the ship. Yeah. Mm. Well, perhaps next time, Tim. Yeah, next time, mate. No worries. <laughs> no worries. Um, probably be about another 20 years before I move, but um. <laughs> I'll be all to help you then. <laughs> yeah. I've got a question now. Uh, you go on. You go ahead, Rob. No, Edwin makes the remark that I don't live in Holland, which is only the north western part of the Netherlands, mm -hmm. and I live in the south, close to Belgium, mm -hmm. and those people in Holland don't think that's Holland too. All right, chaps, I'm, I have to run, unfortunately. Okay, mate. Well, great talking with you. Thanks for answering those um, hot seat questions. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> what we should do um, is make a cut of that and um, put it on Google Plus. So, uh, Rob, Rob is opening a new agency and looking for new clients. What do you reckon? Yeah, yeah. Mm, I'll do that. Depends how it sounds. You'll need to check it back first. I might have sounded like a tit. No, it was great, uh, Tim. Really, oh, you answered okay. every question. Uh, it was you answered them fair. The, the thing that surprised me, the, the thing that surprised me was that you sounded like you knew what you're talking about. Holy moly, mother of no! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Edwin. Go just, ahead. Just leave out the mud cuts bit. I mean, then you'd be fine. Yeah, and then yeah. uh, your, your mother. Uh, uh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. Right, chaps. I need to run. I've got to sort out, uh, sort, sort, sort the women out. Okay, mate. Well, thank you, Tim. Cheers. No, thank see you. Man. Right, thanks, guys. Um, I'll see you all next week, if not online. And Massa, we need to catch up because um, uh, I'm just, you know, we we need to trade. Um, View count tips, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, we're going to break the bank on this, mate. <laughs> and then we'll just, and then and then we can just show to everyone that these things are absolutely useless, have no meaning, relevance whatsoever. Yep, that's the plan. Yeah, totally. Right. Okay, right. Thanks, guys. See ya. Cheers, Tim. Cheers, cheers. See you next Thursday. Hmm. Well, uh, I guess um, we, um, um, unless you guys have anything uh, to add, um, 
we should um, uh, terminate the broadcast, yes? Yeah. Or no? No, let's... I think it's a good point to, to finish for this week. Okay. Well, look, if you're still watching, and uh, thank you um, for uh, continuing to support us. We really appreciate it. Um, it's um, knowing that there are viewers out there that are actually interested in what we have to say um, that make what we do uh, worthwhile. I, I hope this has been uh, useful for you. It's certainly been a lot of fun for us. And uh, um, if you do have a question that um, we uh, might be able to answer, uh, uh, please add it to the SEO Questions community on, on Google+. Thank you very much. Uh, good night.